These nuts. Who's nuts? These nuts. <sighs> Let me make sure everything here is on the up and up. I'm sorry if this is uh this is a little weird here because um I just got distracted by this brand new illusionist Kickstarter with this fucking fidget stick. Oh boy. Oh boy, didn't know this would be a thing. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, fuck it. So yeah, I thought since I haven't wanted done one of these in a while, why not? Why not just pick a random uh what's today, Wednesday? Yeah, random Wednesday. Wednesday night to do a, a live stream here, which is the uh, the hotness. So why why not? I'll answer some of your questions, and then I'll definitely um, let me look at this uh, fidget stick here real quick. If you guys haven't seen this already, uh, I saw this video today, and I could not uh, I could not believe my eyes. Uh, here it is. It's a uh, fidget stick that Illusionist is putting out because um, I don't know if you guys know this, but the uh, fidget spinning fad is definitely not over yet it, it's still just beginning so i saw that today and just decided to have a a hearty laugh a hearty laugh i guess so yeah just thought you guys if you haven't seen that yet um you definitely want to check that out not to purchase it because god god knows not everyone's that autistic but still um i gotta say that it's it's pretty significant in terms of the uh the mileage that these people are trying to, trying to, um, trying to squeeze here. Uh, pig cunt, are you reading comments? Yes, I am. Uh, I want to kill myself. That's a, that's always a fun meme. Uh, you could use it as a dildo. I would, I wouldn't advise that. It has a little bit of a, it has a little bit of the, um, uh, the grain on it. It has, what do you call it? Okay, here, hold up. They call it a, a worry stone. And uh, it's not a bunch of st a little, it's, they call it a dot matrix that you could rub your dirty little fingers on. Um, don't worry, it's not a piece of plastic, it's a worry stone. Holy shit, all right, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, for my sake, and, and the worst part is that it's going to be an ultimate success. They're going to be very, very successful when it comes to that project. They've only raised 5000 so far, but they put it out today, so that's five grand in one fucking day. Son of a bitch. Um... I got to tell you, uh, these guys are innovating on that money game, uh, motherfuckers. So whereas I'm going to shit on it completely, uh, it's going to be in, uh, for, for moot, uh, moot point because it's going to successful. It's going to be a successful project. Uh, let me go here. Let me check if there's anything hot here. Um, okay. All right. So far, just terrific comments here that are, uh, just phenomenal here. Some uh, some Heisenberg memes. A lot of daddies. Uh, this one, a legitimate question. Thank you, James K, for a legitimate question. I appreciate that. Uh, you're asking me, when am I making a deck of cards on Kickstarter that we can buy? Uh, not for a while, to be honest. If anything, it's probably going to be somewhere next year uh, where I decide to do that. Um, hopefully. I mean, my goal now is to kind of raise this channel as much as possible. And then worry about things like, you know, like a, like an actual deck. And on top of that, I would like to make sure that the deck is pristine and there's nothing wrong with the deck at all. Uh, make sure that the whole manufacturing process is perfect and there's not going to be a hiccup. Um, so that's probably going to have to wait till next year. So uh, this one, let's see, this deck is a bourbon deck. It's a bicycle bourbon deck. It's pretty dope. You see the, it has a kind of an 808 on that uh i like it uh, it's it's not obnoxious like other designs but uh they're pretty pretty good uh let me see if i miss one of these but yeah but uh james k if um if anything probably next year hopefully uh mid-year i'll be able to do something like that but again i want to make sure that uh i want to make sure that everything is pristine as fuck before doing that let me see. Uh, Dank Magician says, how do you suck anal? Uh, I don't know, man. You just got to do it. You got to grit your teeth and fucking do it. Just, uh. Uh, I'm buying any deck of cards you make. Thank you, Max Coda. I appreciate that. Hopefully, when you do buy that deck and when I do make that deck, it's going to be hotness. Um, hotness all over everyone. 
everyone's face. Uh, so Cameron, I already answered. That's the uh, it's a bass. It's a sorry, a bourbon bicycle deck. Uh, these are becoming more and more prevalent in like uh, Walgreens and Barnes and Noble. So you could find these pretty much uh, at any Walgreens now, Barnes and Nobles. I'm I'm finding more and more unique deck uh, there, which is kind of dope. Uh, what do you think of Matthew Furman? Yeah, I don't have any ill will towards Matthew. I think that he's uh, doing what he's doing. He's a good magician. Um, if there's any faults, nothing really. Uh, I mean, he's just kind of an awkward dude in those couple videos. But, you know, he he it might just be uh, that performance. That That's not an overwhelm. That's not like an overall, um, overall sort of, uh, what do you call this? Um, overall you know, say on his character or anything. Uh, but those couple videos that, you know, were highlighted were kind of awkward, but you know, I've seen a couple since then. He's done a pretty good job. The only thing I do disagree with him is on the nature of YouTube uh, tricks. I went down the rabbit hole the other day and decided to go to the Magic Cafe, which by the way, if you guys haven't gone there, the Magic Cafe, don't do it. You want to kill yourself. Um, but I went on a Magic Cafe and I see that he's a little bit of an active member and he was talking a little bit about the... Um, you know, magic on YouTube. And of course, Harry Lorraine got on that fucking chat. So you imagine uh, that was not a great chat. And it was the whole idea of, of YouTube magic, whether it's exposure, whether it's tutorial, you know, they're pretty much the the basic consensus over there at the magic, um, at the magic cafe is that uh, pretty much any magic on YouTube is exposure, that there's nothing good on it uh, if you're teaching it. Again, it's just a different medium, you know? The same shit happened when books became prevalent. You know, people hated that shit. Magicians were like, fuck, books are going to kill magic. Then VHS. So you had a, a lot of people against the idea of VHS. Then fucking DVDs and now downloads. So each generation is going to think that the next generation is going to fucking kill it. Uh, but to be honest, it's just different forms of media. It's different forms of media. YouTube is just one that is more accessible to everyone. Uh, whereas a couple years ago, DVDs weren't necessarily available for everyone to make. You'd have to buy a very expensive DVD writer. But, you know, ultimately, it's kind of a, it, it's really, uh, I see both sides of the argument. Again, I'm very biased as fuck because I'm on the YouTube tutorial is not exposure, you dumb cunt kind of argument. But, you know, it's a great place uh, if you want to go down a rabbit hole. But that's the only thing I kind of, you know, disagree with Matthew Furman. He's more of the exposure. He wants to make YouTube videos where he's performing, which is fucking phenomenal. I mean, um, we need more of those. But again, I just disagree with his views on uh, YouTube YouTube uh, tutorials. Uh, let's see. Hold up. I saw a bunch of comments here while I was dicking on about that. Um, what card trick should I do to the hacker? by Takruo. I'm not sure what you mean, Doc. Definitely not sure what you mean by that. Uh, pick cake, why don't you ever show your face? I think it's an artistic choice at this point that I'm not gonna show my face. I, 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 like, prefer, I prefer that. I don't wanna kinda defer from the overall character by just having my face. And plus it's a little bit mysterious, so I'm definitely not gonna show my face anytime soon. Uh, Archie Cargo says 100k dick reveal still on. Yeah, yeah, that's still on. Uh, I'll show my dick gladly. Uh, what's up with Bowser by Spike119? Uh, this is actually, I've been playing uh, Odyssey recently uh, on the Switch. It's a great fucking game. I'm only by level one. I'm trying to beat the shit out of that. Plus, uh, this amiibo, I forgot where it came from. Oh, with Mario Party. Uh, but yeah, these are fucking dope as shit. So I've been playing Odyssey, but I just thought this uh, amiibo is kind of a nice backdrop. I'm a dumb cunt. Uh, favorite go-to false cut by Paul Gonchero. Fuck. Holy shit. Okay, favorite go-to false cut is this one. I've taught it on the channel. Um, but just briefly, it's uh, Gary Ouellette and Richard Sanders false cut. Uh, Gary Ouellette is the one that came up with this sort of false cut. This idea of swing cutting a couple times uh, casually. That's the Gary Ouellette false cut. Then uh, Richard Sanders decided to do that with a... Uh, adding a, a swivel cut to that. So just briefly here, you swing cut, swing cut again and keep a break. Then you switch these two piles, drop that on top, swivel cut everything over, and that's your false cut. So if you do it quickly, it's uh, it's not one that looks too obnoxious. You're not fucking doing some Benihana bullshit. Um, also, you don't even have to do a swivel cut. You could do one of these and then do a double undercut and it has the same effect. Uh, but ultimately that's um, just a quick, easy, uh, false cut. So there you go. That's a go-to one. Uh, Paul Gonchero. 
Uh, is YouTube blocking ads from you? And do you make money mainly from Patreon or something else? Well, I'm, you know, this is kind of what I'm doing full time now. I really want to make this work. Uh, so that's why I'm selling stuff. Like if you go to pickhig.me, I have uh, downloads or instructionals there that are more premium instructionals. Uh, also, Patreon helps out tremendously. Uh, YouTube ad revenue is pretty shit. Um, on my channel, it's always been shit. But it's kind of natural because of the content, I guess. I say cunt a lot. I say, you know, things that aren't necessarily advertiser friendly. The content's not necessarily horrendous um, by any means. Like, this is not, fuck, I'm not taking my dick out. Uh, but I guess since they do have, you know, that certain algorithm that does favor more of the PG channels, uh, this is definitely not one that gets a lot of ads. So while I do get a little cut from YouTube, it's definitely not uh, anything that's fucking over the top. It's not a uh, PewDiePie money. That's for goddamn sure. Uh, but hopefully one day it will be there. Um, it's just going to be a matter of time. Uh, who asked that? Uh, James Swap. Um, but yeah, it, it kind of sucks. Uh, you know, but I, I mean, I'm not going to change the way I do it. You know, I'm just going to keep doing this the way I do. And then hopefully the growth will come with time. Uh, that's kind of my, uh, my plan. Uh, James Swap, but but yeah, but definitely I want to put out more more like premium instructionals on uh, on that pickcake.me website. I want to see if I could grow the Patreon, offer more things there. Uh, but that's just gonna come with time. So I hope that answered your question. Uh, Cameron McCauley, damn, damn, I'm answering all these questions. Shit, shit. Uh, okay, so Cameron McCauley, you say what got you started into YouTube? Uh, I actually regret not getting into YouTube sooner. Um, honestly, one day I just had a nasty ass migraine and uh, it just, um, you know, I was just sitting in bed and I really thought of a couple ideas for videos and it took me like a little bit of time to actually put, get the effort to, you know, get a camera and uh, the, the camera I got was this one, it's an S7, uh, Galaxy S7, which is a phenomenal phone camera and a phenomenal camera, uh, camera overall. Uh, but I just decided to film some shit, and those are the first episodes uh, on the channel. Um, but yeah, it was just random. wasn't anything um, wasn't anything in particular. The only thing I do regret is not starting sooner. I really wish I did start sooner because by that time, uh, things that uh, definitely might be like it would have been given me more time to kind of establish the channel. So if I would have started sooner, uh, that would have been way better. Uh, South Texas Roughneck, sub homie, sub dog, up there in South Texas. Notice how I say up there in South Texas, up south. That's kind of funny. Uh, Hunter Caswell, why the name Pig Cake? Any story behind it? Yeah, yeah, there's a story. It's, um, it's on the first, uh, you should have been on the first live stream ever. I said it, uh, maybe I'll say it again someday, but I'm not going to say it again. So if you uh, witnessed or if you were there for that first live stream, you would know. Uh, it's nothing too hype. It's nothing exciting. But it is, uh, I guess, a little bit interesting. Uh, favorite magic book to read for cards? Uh, for cards specifically, uh, Expert Card Technique, for sure. I mention that every time. Uh, it's one of my favorite books on cards. Favorite magic book in general, just to read? Um, you know, I'm actually going through Amazon and buying uh, like just cheap old magic books and just uh, getting a lot of information from that. Uh, the last one that I bought, I'll tell you right now, uh, if I could find it here, fucking... It's probably like in a box somewhere in the living room. Uh, but I, let me check my list here. It was uh, it was an Animan book, uh, which was like five bucks on Amazon. Um, the Animan Card Magic book. Fuck, so many good ideas from that. Holy shit. Uh, but they're phenomenal. They're really, really good. So anything by Animan is great. Uh, but I'm just trying to read as much as I possibly can now. Uh, just trying to get as much kind of info in my head. But definitely favorite card magic book to read is Expert Card Technique uh, by Hugo and Browie. Uh, hey, I'm gay. All right. Uh, Nawath Al-Bahiri. Uh, are you going to Magi Fest? Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, is that where, which is that one? Dylan Snow. Uh, is that the one in uh, Carolina? Or is that the one in Orlando? I'll see if I can do the one in Orlando because uh, I really haven't ever gone to a magic convention. Um, so that would be a little bit interesting. Oh, it's in Ohio? Fuck. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, maybe the one in Orlando. Let me see. Are you going to include gas in your deck? Uh, possibly, maybe. I mean, my first idea for a deck would be um, just a simple deck, you know, standard pig cake deck. Uh, obviously, not just the logo. I'm not just going to slap the logo on a fucking deck. I'm going to make it nice. Uh, but that's the first deck. And then the second generation, I, I would want to make a mark deck, uh, something akin to 
um, this new Alex Pandrea deck, something like that, but not obviously not a rip off of that. Um, I want to just make a simple marking on the back and sell it for a reasonable price. Um, so that's kind of what I would like to do. Pharaoh six, uh, favorite card trick. I think I mentioned this every live stream. It's back in time by Jay Sankey, Jay motherfucking Sankey, who still has me blocked. You motherfucker. Um, uh, well, I, he's not a motherfucker. He's a great magician. And an overall fantastic person. He just has me blocked. Um, but, however, uh, Back in Time by Jay Sankey is my favorite trick of all time. It's a perfect trick. Uh, second favorite would have to be Out of This World. The one that I taught on this channel. Uh, that's my second favorite trick. Because it's just it's one of those tricks that people marinate on. Uh, that's definitely my second one. But the first one is Back in Time. It's a perfect trick. Uh, can you check in on my channel and sub now, Ryan Shop? God damn it. You know, I would, but I saw you on Xavier channel kind of asking the same thing so i'm starting to think that this is a uh, a habit you have dog I'm trying to piggyback <coughs> check your channel but yeah no, i want some meaningful content dog uh let's see what's a good hey boy what a good magician you are uh, appreciate your video man by new diversion thank you dog i appreciate that um I'm a little bit freaked out by your profile pic, but I got to say, uh, that's kind of the standard. Most of the profile pics are either pictures of just fucking sunsets. I see some memes every once in a while. Uh, Zule Kakuti. Pick cake is as straight as a circle. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. You know, you suck one dick and then you got the stigma of uh, being a, a cunt. Um, of being a, a, a gay cunt. All your life, just for sucking one penis. God damn it. Uh, let's see. What was your inspiration for magic? Uh, who said that? Fuck. This thing just skipped. Son of a bitch. Hold up. Fuck. Damn, there's a lot of questions here. Hold up. Uh, okay, so Young Magic says, What was your inspiration to, uh, to magic, you cunt? And then some eggplant emojis, some pigs, some of these, uh, some black emojis, and some eggplants. Uh, I imagine you're referring to the BBC, the big black cock there. But, uh, let's see. I, I think I've already mentioned a story. It was a, a middle school kid who said that he could, uh, t he was going to teach me how to float. And he did the shitty David Blaine levitation. And uh, that was the first trick I saw. And then from then on, I just started reading more and more books. That's kind of the, the brief synopsis of how I started uh, getting magic. But then I saw, you know, uh, Magic for Dummies, the Mark Wilson book in magic. Uh, there's that one picture of Jeff Sheridan in uh, Central Park in black and white where he's doing this big fan. Uh, that definitely is the thing that kind of got me inspired uh, for sure. Uh, just that picture of him, you know, that, with that crowd uh, standing out, that that one is for sure kind of what got me cemented, cemented uh, into magic. So uh, signification, I am reading older, uh, I'm reading the old questions and I'm going to get to these new ones here. See, I have this, uh, this is the phone here, the, the, the wide angle hotness. And I see the comments here that are recent, but over here is my laptop and I'm reading the uh, older comments to make sure that I get through all of them or through most of them. The ones that involve uh, actual questions and not either asks, uh, asking me for face reveals or um, gay solicitation, I guess. Uh, fuck them putos. It's a new age of magic. Hey, South Texas roughneck. Yes. Fuck them putos. Motherfuckers. Uh, let's see. Do you know any stories where you use a stack and reveal every card in the deck? I've seen several and I have, uh, you know, um, yes. Uh, I, I remember I have in one of my old notebooks, a, a little stupid story written up like a story deck trick. Uh, the one that I've recently played with, if you watch that video, uh, not to shill my videos, but, uh, there is, um, the red bone red bone. If it was a card trick. Uh, check that out. That's kind of like that. Um, you know, it's not it's not a story, but it's the the song, and uh, you know the the lyrics are are in the cards. That that was fucking. I fucking love that video, but I fucking hated doing that video. Um, really sucks. Uh, <laughs> how many takes it took, and even that take wasn't the best one, which kind of sucks. Uh, but it's the one that I didn't fuck up. So, but you gotta check that out, Redbone. If it was a magic trick. Uh, motherfucker, man, I thought I wanted to, I wanted to kind of piggyback on that red bone, uh, if it was a uh, red bone, if it was mean, but I guess I got too late in there. So that video didn't get that many views. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Piez Mofo. Uh, do you like the new age of magic? Uh, do you mean by like this, like YouTube, the idea of YouTube in that, uh, dank magician? 
Also, my favorite type of magic I don't perform. That's a good fucking question. Q gaming. Uh, does a Q stand for cunt? Ha! <laughs> you get... Oh boy, I'm dying. Uh, let's see. My favorite type of magic I don't perform. Uh, I, I, I don't like stage illusions. Uh, I don't like stage illusions. But I do like... Um, I do like... I just... Oh, damn. A hot super chat. Okay, hold up. I'll get to you, Evan Hamilton, in a little bit. I'll get to you. Uh, but hold up, before I lose my train of thought, uh, I really enjoy coin magic. I don't perform coin magic. I, I, I study it. You know, I, I know all the palms. I, I have a couple routines that, you know, I could say are kind of unique to, my, to me. Uh, but in terms of, uh, I, I love watching coin magic. I really do. Um, so that, I guess, is, 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 I hope that answers your question. Uh, James K and the DVDs were garbage. Pick Cake provides multiple camera angles. Hey, yeah, I mean, I've done that for a couple videos. Uh, just trying to up that production quality. Uh, one of the people that I love is Rise Magic. I'm subscribed to them. Uh, if you haven't, you should fucking subscribe to them. I really want to work with them uh, sometime soon. But uh, fuck, man, every time I look at one of their videos, it's fucking quality. It's, you know, they spend time, they have a table of contents. Fuck. You know, I, I'm just here making dumb jokes, uh, but. You know, they're fucking next level. Also, uh, DK Magician, I recently had one of his videos on my channel, uh, The Split Trick, fucking great. And you see the quality and the time that he took to edit that video. Um, you know, he put uh, some After Effects on it, fucking amazing. So, you know, that, that kind of makes me wanna obviously up my production value, up, you know, what I'm doing, but fucking phenomenal. Uh, okay, so Evan, let me get to you here. You said, Evan Hamilton, uh, will you make a video on the walk around discovery from the anime book? Uh, that video would be dope. Plus, thank you for all the free entertainment. I'll uh, thank you, dog, for those hot ten dollars. Um, and also, uh, the walk around discovery from Anime Book. I gotta check that out. Uh, the first, I, I'm, I'm, I haven't cracked it open in uh, like a week and a half, so I haven't necessarily. I don't know what you mean by walk around discovery. Uh, if you could tell me what page that is, I mean that'd be phenomenal, Evan. Um, but, uh, I'll check it out and I'll let you know, but I don't really want to put a trick on a channel that I'm not like, you know, a hundred percent on. So if it's just a, a cool idea, then it's there, but you know, unless maybe I come up with some sort of variation on it, I, I'm not going to put that on the channel. Um, you know, just for the sake of it, it's there. So people should check it out in the anime book if, um, if they want to look at it, but you know, hopefully, hopefully that answers your shit, but, uh, I'll check it out. I mean, if you could tell me the page number. Let's see, uh, Andreas Schleckner, Schleckner, there you go, yeah, I didn't want to butcher that name, uh, page three, okay, all right, damn, really, motherfucker, okay, how the fuck did I not remember that, I guess, see, in psychology, there's something known as the primacy and recency effect, uh, primacy is that you tend to remember things that are most recent, so, for example, if I read page 50, that's going to be the, the page that I'm going to remember more likely than not, um, or there's a primacy effect, which is that you remember the first things that you hear. But I guess that's uh, me working against that primacy effect. Look at you guys getting a nice hot psych lesson uh, during this hot stream here. Uh, but Andreas uh, Schleckner says, it's better to learn from magic from YouTube or from books. Uh, I would go books first and then YouTube. Uh, YouTube is definitely something good. You know, there's some, there's a fucking amazing DVDs uh, that are being, you know, dis discarded now that are being disregarded, uh, because YouTube is kind of being more prevalent in downloads, but, uh, the wonder series by Tommy wonder fucking amazing. Another guy that, you know, passed away sucks. Uh, but Tommy wonder was a great mind in magic. Um, anything by Michael Marr, LNL publishing, anything by Daryl, another one taken too soon. Motherfuckers. All the good ones are dying. Um, there's the Bill Malone series. Fuck. There's so many. Uh, that you could learn from, but definitely you want to supplement books with, you know, kind of a visual thing. Uh, but what books allow you to do is to come up with your own methods of doing the tricks. So they come up with, you know, you, your own interpretation of the tricks. Videos kind of have you mimic what the person is doing. So I, I much prefer books and then supplementing that with, uh, with videos, Andreas. Uh, Cameron Crawley, you got the classic uh, pizza joke only done with a magician instead of the classic black person. See, that's how I first heard the joke. What's the difference between a pizza and a black person or a pizza and an Italian or a pizza and a Puerto Rican and a pizza and a Cuban? You know, it depends on, but I, I, I enjoy that. Uh, let me see. Uh, Ghost the Ripper, I already mentioned, favorite trick, Back in Time by Jay Sankey. It's fucking dope. 
Um, it's definitely a perfect trick. You should see early on when I upload this video. Uh, what are your thoughts on creating characters? Uh, I mean, in terms of characters, I think that if you are going to make a character, the best thing to do is just to have a version of yourself turned up, you know, turned up to the max or turned up a little bit more. Um, I don't think that I'm much different than pig and the piggy, but, um, you know, this is just how I am. I'm, I'm making stupid jokes. I enjoy crude humor. Uh, I'm a huge fan of saying whatever the fuck you want. You know, I'm not going to censor myself. I know that I, I censored myself initially in the channel, like I, I put beeps, but uh, honestly, those beeps were just there for comedic effect. Uh, there's something about that loud, jarring beep that I found really funny, which is why I put it in the earlier videos. Um, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, I think that if you're going to make a character, it needs to be something that's kind of similar to you, uh, only kind of turned up a little bit. You see people like, you know, Chef Anton. Uh, who's playing like this, the role of like a a some sort of hustler, like a pool hustler? Um, yeah, it's it's him, but it's him exaggerated a little bit uh, to kind of accentuate the performance uh, quality. Bill Malone, you know, if Bill Malone, if Bill Malone is like that twenty four hours, holy fuck, that must be exhausting. Uh, but that's him turned up a little bit. So I think that it's the best advice on creating a character is be you, but with the uh, personality turned up uh spike you're welcome dog uh, kenneth hey retard hello uh retardo that's that's me calling you retardo uh lindsey harvey says that i think a train of thought is old honestly i started magic from watching youtube and without me i wouldn't spend any money yeah of course uh you know it's definitely the 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 idea of just a new media youtube is a new media and people need to fucking realize that uh so you have people that you know they have they have opinions that aren't necessarily incorrect because you do have exposure on youtube uh you do have people kind of doing things that they shouldn't on youtube um but ultimately you have people like me you have people like xavier spade you have people like chris ramsey you know russian genius um you have people like that uh um I'm, you know if i fail to mention someone don't don't get don't fucking shit on me if i forgot to mention somebody but you have people like that that are um you know doing tutorials and trying to you know teach and trying to Kind of expand on that um but as far as uh like straight up exposure exposure you know i i do think that there's a little bit something wrong with that morally um technically you know it's not against the rules you know youtube is kind of a somewhat reasonably free platform uh you know i can't really say things that are truly you know against the youtube kind of thought uh thought or think tank but uh, ultimately, the concept is that anybody can make a video, right? So there's technically nothing wrong against YouTube rules to make a video where I'm showing you how to do, for example, uh, a move that's marketed, right? But morally, there's everything wrong with that. So, you know, I just think that that's kind of where they see YouTube, but they're not seeing the, the, the extent of what's possible with things like YouTube, where you're able to reach out an audience. I would never be able to you know, uh, have contacts like I have, I could say now that I have contacts in magic that are well-known names, uh, just through YouTube. I could say that I'm reaching out an audience, uh, through YouTube. And these are things that wouldn't be possible without that. So, you know, where you have people that are stuck in the old school mentality, I see that, but I don't agree with that. So, uh, I hope, you know, that kind of expands on your thing. Uh, what are your current, uh, what are your own personal goals for developing yourself as a performer? Um, well, obviously, it's to learn as much as possible, John Lee. Uh, I want to learn as much as possible. I want to see uh, as much as I possibly can in the magic world. Um, not to say that I'm going to take the time to learn everything. Uh, like, I'm not going to take the time to learn, you know, every, each and every move. I'm not a move monkey. I was listening to Xavier Spade yesterday on his uh, stream, and he was saying that he's a move monkey, and he laughs. You know, other people that couldn't do the moves. Uh, you know, fuck. He has, he's so much better than me at, uh, at like, just the technical aspect. Um, I, that's not to say that I don't want to learn the moves and learn of the moves, but I'm not going to take the time to practice, like, the, the little things. I'm, I'm the opposite of a move monkey. I, I, I want to learn things that are practical for me, like, I want to take the time to, to actually physically practice the things that are, um, that, you know, I think have uh, reasonable value. So I don't consider myself a move monkey. But uh, for developing myself as a performer, I want to read and learn as much as possible. That's kind of, uh, kind of you know, the goal there. Uh, Hulk, only one hour left for my semester exam and you're watching my stream. I feel like that happens every stream, Hulk. Dirty. That happens every stream, dog. Uh, John Lee, thank you. I mean, you're welcome, dog. 
you should put something on theory 11. Yeah, maybe. Um, uh, I doubt it. That's a, that's a, I mean, yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's never gonna fucking happen. Jesus. I don't want them taking a cut of my shit. Mm. Honestly, that's why I'm, um, you know, on the website that I'm using, uh, for the stuff that I'm shilling, which, uh, BTW, pick cake, dot me use code keen for 40 percent. i'm sorry use code keen for 20 percent off any card at any number the persistence of memory project the five minus two project is hot 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 okay that's the shilling portion done um but the reason i'm doing that on that particular website is because i really don't want to have to deal with somebody taking a cut um you know that's a service that you you do pay a monthly fee for but i do like the format and the ability of uh, me being able just to break down all the things and in individual moves uh you know so if you look at the if you go there you notice that there's different sections so it's like intro moves uh part like the individual parts of the trick so um as far as uh as far as that you know I don't want to have to rely on someone like Theory 11 or Penguin Magic or uh, Illusionist. So I want to do kind of, I want to kind of do that on my own and avoid the middleman. Uh, let's see. Tips on growing a fan base. I think it's uh, be consistent and um, be clear and consistent. Uh, so you want to be as consistent as possible. You want to be as clear as possible. And you want to make sure that you kind of don't stray uh, too far away. So, you know, and obviously quality counts. Uh, you don't, you're never going to get anywhere filming, uh, you know, you're on top of your bed with a fucking, not even a light, um, the audio, you hear a fan, like you're not going to get people watching your stuff with that. Uh, you need to find a way to stand out. You need to find a way to kind of find your own niche. You know, I'm kind of, I could safely say that I'm the only cunt magician on YouTube. Uh, that, that's kind of my, my claim to fame. Uh, because you have, you know, a lot of standard magician channels on YouTube. You have a lot of standard magicians on YouTube. I could say that I'm the only cunt bag on YouTube. Uh, you know, so that's that's kind of good. I guess that that's my niche. So I guess you got to find a niche. You got a niche, whatever, how the fuck you say it. Uh, but you got to find it, stick to it, and be consistent. Uh, let me look at the more recent questions. I know that I skipped a bunch here that are recent because I was looking at the older ones. Um... I have a channel, but I've been trying not to put other people's stuff. A lot of it's my own. Uh, I mean, yeah, I before I put out anything, I try to make sure that it's not stepping on anyone's toes. I try to make sure that it's not, um, you know, I try to make sure that it's not necessarily uh, somebody else's trick. Uh, I try to do that as much as possible. I try to go out of my way to see the actual origins of the trick so if you notice on the last on the trick that i put today dangerous coin trick it's a classic two in the hands one in the pocket right uh and then you know just me saying it's a classic is enough to dismiss it but instead i wanted to go out of my way uh if you guys want to learn the true method you notice that in the comments or in the description i left uh that it's it comes from bobo's coin magic and then even then it goes from fucking before uh i think even before bobo but um, I left the original name, the, the book. So I try to credit as often as I possibly can to the point where it's kind of obnoxious. Um, but I, I just want to set the precedent uh, for people to do that. Uh, but any advice on creating without infringing on others is be very careful, uh, Travis. Be careful. Uh, make sure to, you know, uh, I think if uh, you don't want to, I, I mean, the thing is that you don't want to go to the point where it's, Okay, so I'm holding the deck in mechanics grip. Mechanics grip could be dated back to fucking, like, you don't want to, nitpick everything but you also don't want to step on anyone's toes so you got to find a good midpoint on that uh and it really comes from research it really comes on uh just effort man i see a lot of people's youtube channels they don't take the effort to fucking even decide to realize that you're that's somebody else's trick that that's you know that came from somewhere it just, just didn't you know spontaneously come to your head uh so i just think that we're always standing on the shoulders of giants and uh it's definitely good um to, to credit uh, Daniel Bishop, do a card trick that we haven't seen before that will fool us. Obvious reference to Penn and Teller, Newt, Newt. Uh, just because you said Newt, Newt at the end, um, I'm gonna have to deny that. I'm sorry. Holy shit. Uh, holy shit. Just because you said Newt, Newt. What the fuck is that? Uh, what do you think of Xavier Spade's pass, golf nut? I think it's great. Motherfucker has a phenomenal pass. Um, you know, you see in that last video, uh, the one that I put up 
on a man on ninth floor. Uh, that's kind of my <laughs> Daniel. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, but um, that man on the ninth floor, that's kind of, I like that riffle pass. I like, I have that, that habit of doing that. Obviously, it's the worst angle uh, for a classic pass, but Xavier's pass is just fucking phenomenal. Uh, he does that beautiful cover pass, which is phenomenal. Um, but I, I'm a fan of that, that standard riffle pass, uh, that back riffle pass. I'm, I'm really a huge fan of that. On that project, I teach another bonus pass. That's kind of good, but you know. Uh, I, I definitely think that Xavier is fucking killing it with his fucking sleight of hand mastery. Uh, my favorite deck, uh, I, I mentioned before, I think it's the Madison Rounders. Uh, not because I particularly enjoy Illusionist or, you know, the, the Madison community, uh, but uh, I do like the uh, Rounders. I like the fact that it's just literally two things on the back. So it's like you have one, the logo here, the logo here, and then that's it. You know, I like that sort of shit. Uh, fuck, I missed a comment here. Which deck are you using there? Uh, yeah, I already said it. Uh, Marquis Shogar Demios. I fucking raped that name. Uh, but this deck is the bourbon deck, bicycle bourbon deck. I found these at Walgreens, uh, or Barnes and Noble's, one of those. Uh, what is the best or favorite coin trick? Mine, I haven't put anywhere. Uh, I call it end of world because, uh, when I was in high school, I, I was a fan of naming tricks really gaily. Uh, there's one thing that I grew up with is LNL Publishing. And, uh, you know, one of my favorite things was going on the back of the DVDs of LNL Publishing and reading all the unique names for that magicians have for tricks and shit. Um, so this was one that I decided to call End of World because it's just everything I know in one coin routine. Uh, but that is my favorite coin routine and I have not put that anywhere. Uh, let's see. Let me go to the more recent shits here. Oh, fucking cunt. Uh... Let me see, let me see. Oh, plus the AIDS. That's that. Thank you. Yeah, that's what differentiates my channel. It's the AIDS. Uh, everyone buy an illusionist fiddlestick or Adam Wilbur will cut himself on his edge. Yeah, you're right. He'll burn himself with the um, the pyro. Fucking crazy ass motherfucker. Uh, Lindsay Harvey, no problem. Yeah, you dropping some hot, some hot comments, Lindsay. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh... You don't even need any form of physical misdirection. Your patter is elite. Very jealous. Uh, I guess. I mean, I guess. That, uh, if you look at that man on a ninth floor video, that's kind of the patter that I'll use. That's kind of, that's kind of the patter that I use, um, you know, in performance. Uh, so that is kind of an indicator of, you know, that style. So if you look at that one. Um, but, but yeah. Uh, Jack Hart, how doth fair sire? Fucking gay, dude. What the fuck? I passed that English class way, way too long ago for me to be reading old English. Uh, I wish I could say, but I got to go to bed. Hope the rest of the stream goes well. Yes, doc. Thank you. Uh, you, you have a good night, Razier the furry. Holy shit. I hope you aren't really a furry because fuck. Um, you know, I, I saw this fucking amazing video by this guy who was on trending um, but I've been watching him for a while, so you can see I'm a fucking hipster. Uh, it's called Internet Historian. Internet. Internet Historian. He had a bunch of great videos on uh, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, the recent one that got a lot of views was uh, Fire Festival. But there was one that he made on Rain Forest. Son of a Ooh, fucking Francis. bitch. This one. Uh, now that I read the name Furry there. Now that I read... Uh, thank you, Tom, you fucking cunt. Uh, but yeah, but uh, this video right here, um, don't watch it yet. No, don't watch it yet. Keep that on a different tab. Uh, but that video is uh, about furry, a furry convention. Um, uh, what the fuck is wrong with furries, man? Holy shit. That's a fucking weird sect. Uh, Jack Hart, will you teach End of World? Uh, yeah, maybe somewhere on the line. It's a, it's a very involved coin, uh, coin routine. There's a lot of stuff. There's like Homer, uh, some Homer Lee wagon there. Um, there's definitely some Roth in there. There's a lot of fucking different parts of that, uh, of that routine. It's, it's a mixture of, uh, it, it's pretty much just to give you a little bit of a effect on that. It's, uh, God damn it, Tom, what am I going to have to do, dude? You know, unfortunately, see, I don't get offended by that, but you might, you might offend somebody else. So I'm going to, I'm going to put you in a timeout uh, until you're done saying that <laughs> nigger nigger. Uh, but uh, just to kind of synopsize the end of world, um, 
it's you know three coins appear and the misdirection there, there's a production that i have for that which i think is very fucking clean very clean i, I call it the misdirection production uh but it's a production and then it's a coins across and then it's a coins on a table and then the coins disappear that's kind of the the trick you know that's kind of the um the synopsis of it but it's a whole routine it's it's very involved uh but i i really enjoyed it um but i'll probably teach you somewhere down the line uh let's see you could use a fiddle stick for a dildo yeah i think i mentioned it will be a little bit hard to do uh because of the um the ribbed nature of it but someone you know a a anything's a dildo if you're uh if you're brave enough uh let's see archie cargo getting tired and have shit tomorrow so yeah peace peace dog um do a card trick with this live video angle yeah i've, I've done that before it's not a it's not a fucking challenge <laughs> fuck that's just not a challenge uh, i mean there's i can't uh, what trick could i do i don't know what trick i don't know what trick i could do um i don't know what trick i could do son of a bitch yeah it's it's i'll think of if i think of something i'll do some uh boy let me see uh something about jabrizi's girlfriend fakes her orgasm like jabrizi fakes his reactions yeah maybe i don't know i'm not there i'm not there to see it you know maybe he doesn't maybe he does he is uh he is an african fellow so you know what they say they have a uh, hashtag bbc right <laughs> oh shit okay that was too much uh but yeah but uh, i don't know yeah i i i'm sticking with the xavier the xavier uh not mentioning jabrizi uh, you know, out of mind, out of, out of sight, out of mind. Uh, can you do a tutorial for David Ross coin across? Uh, no, I mean, it's David Ross trick, unfortunately. So I'm not going to do a tutorial for his trick. Uh, am I a retard? Okay. Golf nut. You said, am I a retard that uh, I can do the pinky count better than a fan? No, no. You just spent more time practicing a pinky count. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Harley Calero, you say, uh, how much do you practice in a day? I mean, I'm always holding cards. Uh, I'm always holding cards. I always have a little fucking coin that I'm doing a coin roll. Uh, you know, I'm always doing little fucking, you know, just practicing fans, practicing just fucking cuts and shuffles. Um, but, uh, so all day, pretty much if I'm holding a deck, if I'm near deck, I'm fucking cutting it and mixing it, uh, you know, practicing passes and shit. So, you know, it's nothing that I, uh, <laughs> Harold, you cunt. Uh, yeah, it's nothing that like I'm doing like, hey guys, look at me. I'm getting attention. I'm holding cards. You know, it's nothing like that, uh, which I've seen. I've seen. Um, but, you know, it's just to try to get that practice and to make sure that I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm sharp, that I am sharp. So there you go, Harley. Uh, do you have the new JK Hartman book? No, unfortunately not. Uh, I've seen stuff by JK Hartman before, but I'm, I'm, unfortunately I haven't bought his new book. Uh, I fucking hate the word challenge almost as much as organic. Yeah, yeah, it's a cancer word. Uh, this is a great video by Colossal. Colossal uh, about challenges and all that uh, signification. That's fucking phenomenal. By the way, signification. Yeah, I I saw your email. Don't think that I just because I haven't responded. Um, I haven't read it. Uh, but I've yeah, I just haven't gotten a chance to reply to you. So uh, don't think that I'm a cunt and I forgot about your email. I did. You know, I did read it and I did go through it, but I just haven't uh, had the chance to kind of respond to it uh, in, in thing. But you're, you're a fucking funny cunt, I'll tell you that. Uh, any advice on filming with not so great equipment? Uh, yeah, I mean, really depends on what equipment you're talking about. Um, I know that, uh, I know that, you know, this, uh, the first videos that I shot, I shot with um, this. This is a Galaxy S7. I bought this specifically for... Um, just filming. I didn't buy it as a phone, even though I did buy it. Uh, you know, you go to you go to fucking. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna rent on this fucking website for a sec. Um, it's through Reddit, but it's uh, Swappa, right? It's a great fucking website. I bought phones from them before, but this one, I bought this phone and it was a okay. It was a phenomenal phone. It had. Uh, it was clear. It, everything was good. Uh, unlocked Galaxy S7. Uh, you could use it. You know, on T-Mobile, which is what I have. This motherfucker who sold me this motherfucking phone, it's it's a well-known fucking scam uh, where they sell you a phone that's completely good, uh, and then within a month, it becomes blacklisted because it becomes reported stolen, 
then you return the phone to this person and then they just resell it. You know, that, it's like a fucking piece of shit. So this motherfucker, uh, it's the same sensor signification. This is the same sensor as the, uh, same sensor as the Note 7. Uh, it's actually, I think, the same sensor as the Note 8. The only thing is that the Note 8 has different optics uh, and has different software uh, optimizations for the camera, but it, it's not much different. Um, but, uh, yeah, so motherfucker, so this phone is blacklisted. I tried to communicate with fucking PayPal to see if I could do a chargeback. No, I can't. So I'm fucked out of that. So I can't use this phone as a phone, um, which is, you know, kind of as like an emergency thing. So I got fucked on that. But this has a phenomenal camera. Um for that but it's not necessarily something that's super expensive i should have gotten like a g5 which would have been the same price uh g5 is a camera uh, the panasonic g5 but uh advice is lighting mind your lighting and mind your audio that's that's what i that's the best advice on uh filming with uh, not so great equipment so make sure that the lighting is on point and make sure that the uh the the audio is taken care of so this is a galaxy s7 with a uh a case that's made for the phone that Samsung sells. It has a wide angle lens, so it's a wide angle. And then on top of that, I'm, I'm using a video mic, me, right? Uh, and then that's, that's how I'm doing it, fuck. Uh, that's how I'm doing this live stream. But this is what I used to make the first couple of videos. And to be honest, there's no noticeable difference between the quality of those videos and uh, the video, sorry, with the, the T6i uh, Canon, which is what I have up there, and this, so you can't fucking tell the difference uh the only difference is that on this i could do zoom and it doesn't lose quality on this i can't zoom without uh the reduction of quality so uh just mind your audio and mind your uh lighting uh and you can make even even if something like filmed with an iphone 5 you can make it look fucking phenomenal uh so yeah there you go i hope that answered your question travis askew uh where's the bbc link you fucking cunt uh i'll quote you on that anything works with the dildo if you're brave enough yeah for sure that's that's a fact daniel uh, anything works uh as a dildo if you are brave enough just like anything is edible if uh you are uh if you're brave uh can i make you my pregnant with my massive one inch here let's bang my grandma aids i think you took the uh cunt cuntness to the next level there dog it's too much cunt you want to you want to kind of be a little bit not so much cunt. Enough cunt that people are interested, but not enough cunt where people are ter like get turned away. Uh, signification. How do you keep the humidity from quickly ruining the cards here in Florida? AC. Uh, I mean, I don't sleep outside. Air conditioner kind of uh, helps with that. Sigma, so. Or Sisma, sorry. Uh, upload a video of you performing to real people. Maybe. Maybe I'll do that somewhere down the line. Uh, I'm actually uploading I'm, uh, to you guys, to the current 35 motherfuckers that are watching this. Um, I'm going to upload a video so that uh, you guys know ahead of time. It's called uh, Street Magic, you know, me performing Street Magic. Uh, it's not me uh, doing Street Magic. It's me literally doing magic on the uh, just outside. So uh, the reason I mentioned that is because I already know that if I do a stupid, like a gag like that, I'm going to get a bunch of dislikes just because people don't uh, don't understand fucking jokes. So I'm just telling you guys ahead of time that that video is just me doing magic on the street. I just do a fucking trick outside. Like that's, that's pretty, it's a tutorial outside. So just, just warning ahead of time. It's not coming out, I think, until next week. But uh, yeah, motherfuckers. Because I, I found that little stream of Minecraft videos that I did fucking hysterical. I made myself fucking gag with those motherfuckers. Because the first video was... Uh, uh, you know, the ma world's greatest card trick. And it was me playing Minecraft for, for 30 minutes. And uh, I, it got like more dislikes than anything I've put up on the channel. Um, I thought it was fucking hysterical. And then the next video, the th thumbnail was me. The thumbnail and the title of the video were uh, Pig Cake Plays Minecraft. And it was a card trick tutorial. Dog, that's fucking, I, I fucking, I jacked my own dick with that. Uh, as to how funny I found that idea. But other people didn't. So I'm just warning you guys ahead of time. Don't get disappointed if you see Pig Cake Street Magic video. And it's literally me doing magic tricks outside on the street. Uh, let's see. Sometimes I put my Nokia in vibration in my ass. All right, dude. Uh, can you do a tutorial on the spoon trick from the 5 minus 2 project trailer? Uh, that spoon trick is, is exclusive to Illusionist. I've sold it to Illusionist. They're going to sell it for $35.96 uh, on their website. 
They're not going to have it on Magic Stream. They're going to sell it specifically for $35.96 on uh, their website. Uh, cunts. Uh, you want to eat my ass, Anthony Constantino? Uh, eh, I mean, I'm not into ass play, but um, maybe. Uh, maybe if I'm ever experimental. Uh, were you joking a lot with the students when you were a teacher? Yes. Yes, for sure. I uh, got in trouble for joking too much. Uh, what's your favorite class, uh, pass? Uh, you could see it on a less shitty angle in that, um, that trailer. for uh, Not the trailer. I'll, I'll link it. Uh, but you could definitely see it on the performance of Man on the Ninth Floor. Uh, you could definitely see that pass um, on it. Uh, let me see if I could link the video here, Man on the Ninth Floor. Uh, you could definitely see my favorite pass there. It is a like a back riffle pass, best way to describe it. Again, don't look at it now, but uh, check it out when you get the chance. Uh, but that's my favorite pass. Uh, favorite self-working trick. Uh, this is too many. Uh, I almost, uh, most all the tricks that I like really, really love are, are self-working tricks. Um, so uh, there, there are way too many. Uh, I actually, honestly, my favorite self-working trick is one by John Bannon. Uh, it's fucking so good. Motherfucker. Fuck him for being so, for like, God. Ah, okay. He has this trick where literally... Uh, it's a small pile of cards. The spectator spreads them like this to themselves. They think of any one of them. They don't fucking, you know, it's not one of these like, oh, here, let me riffle down here. Think of that card. No. Motherfuckers spread the cards. They think of any card they want. Uh, and then you test their intuition, right? So you test if they're able to determine whether or not their card is in, um, you know, a certain location or not. And then at the end of that, you're able to fucking find a card that they picked. Motherfucker, the card that they thought of. So it's a beautiful fucking trick. I forgot the name of it now. John Bannon recently came out with it. Uh, in um, I bought it. I think it's either. It's probably the the series that he has now with the self working tricks. Uh, move. I, okay, it's Move Zero Volume Two. I think it's in Move Zero Volume Two. Fuck. Shit, you need a. I mean, if you haven't gotten that, that's a fucking amazing trick. That trick was alone worth the value of it, but it's fucking phenomenal. And you don't do any work, self working. They think of any card. Motherfucker. That's my favorite self working trick. Uh, Rick Holocomb. Sorry I ejaculated uh, at the thought of that trick, but it's just such a good fucking trick. Uh, will you ever do a face reveal? Maybe down the line. Not anytime soon. And definitely, uh, yeah, not, not soon. Uh, I just, I, I prefer this. I like, I like the anonymity. Uh, is there a reason that you don't show, show your face by, uh, who said that, Travis Askew? Um, yeah, I mean, the idea for this channel was always Miss Mag on crack. I miss you, Miss Mag. Come back to YouTube um, and enter my email. Uh, motherfucker. Uh, but yeah, but um, I want to be Miss Mag on crack. So that's kind of my inspiration for the channel. Miss Mag never showed his face, so I didn't show my face. Uh, and then now I realize that it's more of like, it's, it's more of a thing now. It's like, uh, it's like, for example, I don't think people would be that interested in how to basic if he showed his face, right? Because then it'd just be a guy that just smashes shit. Uh, but the fact that, you know, and of course you see, you see his face in other videos, like by iDubs and Max Mofo. But, um, the fact that you don't see his face and you actually don't legitimately like factually know what he looks like. Uh, that adds kind of to the mystery of it, and I, I want to keep that uh, on this channel as much as possible. You know, I'm not going to gain anything by showing my face. Uh, I'm not going to lose anything either, so. Well, I would gain the trust then, you know, I guess that, you know, showing your face, you kind of show your your viewers that you are an actual person, and they, you know, psychologically, yeah, I guess I am losing that, but I'd rather keep the artistic value of the mystery and not show my face. Uh, Mac Rosikahardemios, fuck. Yeah, I fucking nutted on that. Uh, let's see. Have any suggestions on effects that could be done with video games? None. Uh, none whatsoever. I don't know. I, I can't think of any tricks that involve video games. Uh, Lucas O says, uh, why don't blind men skydive? Because it scares the shit out of the dog. Am I, am I dead that I don't understand that? Am I, is that, am I dead? 
that I don't understand that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Warren Taylor, no worries, pig cake. I get yo shit. It's the reason I keep coming back for more. Coming with a U. I like that. A hard U. That's the best thing. Uh, I like the one done by jo uh, Jolly Graham. Uh, it, I think it's Graham Jolly. Might be his name. Graham Jolly, not Jolly Graham. Jolly Graham sounds like a fucking porn star. Uh, but Graham Jolly, yeah, he has a great one. Um, I think that even goes back. Uh, that's not Graham Jolly. It goes to... Um, it's not Harry Lorraine. Uh, motherfucker. Alan Ackerman, maybe? Maybe, I think. It, it goes way back. Uh, the one that uh, Graham, uh, Graham Jolly did on Fool Us. It goes way back. Uh, there you go. Whispering Jokers. Yeah, there you go. But that's... the uh, Whispering Jokers is... Uh, Fuck, man. Now you're going to have to make me look this up. Whispering Joker's trick. Uh, it's going to drive me fucking crazy as to who came up with this originally. Uh, whispering. Oh, Carl Fultz is there, I guess. Let me see. No, no. Okay, never mind. Uh, wait, hold up. This trick uh, exploits a little known principle. No, it's not. It's not Carl Fultz. It's somebody else. Fuck. If one of you guys know the original, um, Simon Aronson, right? Motherfucker, Simon Aronson. Might be him. Yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, it's definitely him. Uh, motherfucker. Yeah, it's his trick, Whispering Joker. That's a great one, too. Uh, how'd you get the name Pig Cake? I said it before, dog. I said it in the first live stream, and I mentioned that I would say it. Maybe sometime, sometime... Sometime from now, but um, if you weren't here for that first live stream, dog, you missed out. Uh, I've been trying to find out a way to have two randomly chosen game cases of transpo. Yeah, you could probably do that with like a shell. If you have, uh, yeah, Patreon has all the live streams. You're right. I I've been lazy on that. I, I need to, I need to unlist all the, all the previous live streams on YouTube. I need to unlist those and put those on Patreon. But yeah, but uh, on Patreon, I have uh, all the live streams archived there. So the first one's archived on Patreon. Um, thank you, Lindsay, for reminding me that. Uh, but, uh, hold up, fuck, now I got distracted. Oh, uh, yeah, Demios. Uh, you could use a Game Boy game and a sh you can make a shell out of a Game Boy game, now that I'm thinking about it. And then you could use it kind of as a, uh, as like, you know, the same that you would as a shell, as a coin, uh, if you want to make them transpo. Or a double face uh, game cartridge. That also works. That's kind of hot. Um, but yeah, but that, that's a kind of a weird idea. I guess it's easier to do with like the Switch things because they're almost memory cards. Uh, I'm your favorite card trick YouTube channel. That's a very specific category, no? Card trick YouTube channel. Uh, but I appreciate that, Haven Tips. Uh, you're my favorite commenter in the past five seconds. So you, you take that and jerk with it. Um, uh, Pontus, I can't repeat that for fear of being demonetized, but yeah, har har, har har, I, I always a good racist joke, you cunt. Um, sorry for the archaic forms of English, I couldn't resist it. Yeah, I, yeah, I appreciate the uh, good old English, good old Martin Luther English. Uh, Anand Suresh, who is your favorite magician? I have too many. Uh, I need to I need to have a list. Yeah, yesterday I was like I'm gonna put down a list of my favorite magicians so I don't forget them. Uh, obviously, Penn and Teller were inspirations from the fucking start. Um, you know them with their their original their old books. Uh, watching their TV shows uh, when I was really really young, they they were a real big inspiration. Um, so I love Penn and Teller, Paul Harris, Jeff Sheridan, uh, Greg Wilson, uh, Bill Malone. You know David Williamson, all the fucking classics. Uh, those are all my my fuck my favorite magicians. You know, studying them, Tommy Wonder, Jay Sankey. Uh, you know, they pretty much are the people that made me Daryl. Yeah, fuck. Uh, somebody asked if I ever saw uh, before I forgot who did. Uh, somebody asked me um, if I ever met Aldo Colombini. Unfortunately, I did not. Uh, you know, he was one of the ones that you saw the decline coming, and it sucked because. You know, uh, he they kept updating on Facebook his health conditions. Uh, I think in 2014 when he was very, very sick and his wife kept updating on that. And then, you know, it got progressively worse. And, you know, it kind of sucks uh, that he, he passed away in the way he did. And then his wife, I think, uh, also passed away uh, maybe a year and a half later. But fuck, man. 
God damn it. It just sucks. You know, Rene Lavand is another one. Motherfucker. You know, it's a shame that these people are fucking, uh, you know, selfishly. Again, I'm being very selfish here when I say that. It sucks they died because I didn't get to meet them. But, uh, Baron Boots. Keep that for the first stream, dog. That's that's the first stream. That's that's special for the first stream. Uh, but yeah, but it, it just sucks. Uh, another one recently, uh, to answer the question, you, Trevor Barber, because uh, this is related to what I'm talking about. Uh, if you had 24 hours to spend learning from one magician, dead or alive, uh, dead, just in my current mood right now, it would be Tom Molica, who died. Motherfucker, he beat leukemia. This motherfucker beat leukemia. If you haven't seen his videos, everyone's seen his fucking videos because he's the one that eats the cigarettes, right? It's a wonderful routine. He's throwing his cigarettes in his mouth and people thought he was going to die of lung cancer. No, he fucking, he had leukemia. He beat leukemia and he had a botched hernia operation and that killed him. Motherfucker. Jesus, that fucking was the worst thing ever. Uh, but definitely, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd love to spend uh, some time with Tom Malika. Just a fucking genuine, you see through the his teachings, you know, I, I pretty much, I have a stack in, in my, my parents' house. I have like a stack of old fucking tapes from him. Fuck, man, what a fucking great, great fucking guy. But unfortunately, yeah, he's one that left us way too fucking soon. Um, but Tom Malika, uh, yeah, I definitely spent 24 hours with him. And I know somebody might say, oh, Marlo, die Vernon. Yeah, I guess, um, but Tom Mullica, I think that he had so much left to offer, and it sucks that he left, you know, left us too soon. Um, he, he, I think he wanted to do a Red Skeleton reunion. I wanted to reopen his bar, uh, the Tom Foolery, right? Uh, he said that in the Penguin Magic lecture. Um, oh, what, the, what a fucking shame. Another one, Bob Cassidy. Fuck. Motherfucker. Bob Cassidy is another one that's a fucking amazing, man. It was amazing. And then, you know, I, I, he had a, a more of a resurgence on Penguin Magic uh, with his lectures and stuff. And he came off a couple downloads there. But, you know, he also passed away. And it's just a fucking shame. Uh, that, the one thing that I hate looking at, just out of morbid uh, curiosity, is and if you, if, you, if you go to the Magic Cafe, uh, they, have a, uh, they have a forum there that is called latest and no, not latest and greatest they have something called uh like about did you hear the latest right and it's always oh see right now fantasio just passed away son of a bitch see i hate this i hate fucking looking at this because you look at this and then uh it, you just see that somebody died <laughs> motherfucker so yeah, so Fantasio, uh, if you guys don't know him, apparently he passed away. Motherfucker. Uh, he's, he's another one, man. I remember I bought that cane. He passed away. I mean, he was old as shit, but Fantasio, motherfucker. He died today? Yeah, fuck, November 1st. Motherfucker. Uh, the name of the guy that beat leukemia is Tom Mullica. Uh, M-U-L-L-I-C-A, Tom Mullica. Yeah, so fucking Fantasio passed away. But yeah, but you have a forum. This one, uh, I'm going to put it here in the link. This one is called Latest and Greatest on the Magic Cafe. Again, I hate the Magic Cafe. I fucking detest it with a, a fucking um, passion. But they have, uh, you know, that I, I look at from time to time whenever I have morbid curiosity just to see who the fuck died. Uh, and today, apparently, look, I, I, I didn't even set it up and Fantasio fucking dead. So you always look at these fucking shits hoping that Somebody else didn't fucking die. But yeah, but Fantasia, another one. Fucking great. I think he was from my area. He was, uh, um, where was he from? He wasn't, he wasn't. I know he lived in, in the Miami area. Fantasio. Magician. I know that he lived down here in South Florida. Uh, yeah, motherfucker died today. I Oh, he's from Argentina. But yeah, he was, he was big and heavy down here. Um, in the penis of the United States. Uh, let me see. Yeah, but there you go, Fantasio, motherfucker. Another one that's dead. Uh, let me see these if I missed anything here. Do you know any ma uh, magic shops south of Orlando? No idea how to find them. Well, in Miami, you have the fucking House of Costumes on 8th Street, uh, which used to be one of the fucking best magic stores. And the fucking, well, it was best magic store because it was the only magic store that I fucking went to. 
Um, overpriced everything. Dirty. Is a fucking old Cuban motherfucker that just behind the counter. Uh, he did the trick shitty as fuck. But it just had like a homey magic store feeling. And it's like a, it's a, it's a, um, a landmark in uh, South Florida. The House of Costumes. But uh, they went from having a whole wall of magic to literally, I think, less than uh, a shelf of tricks now. So it's all fucking stupid shit now. It's, it's, I, I need to go back there um, soon. But they literally reduced everything to a fucking little piece of shit. Uh, like literally one, whatever you call it, under the glass. One of those. That's literally all they have now of magic. And before they used to have a whole section with gimmick cards and gaff cards and coins and shit. And to me, every, every time I'd walk in there, you know, I'd see like the fucking bending coin and I'd see scotch and soda. And the guy would come in and he'd be like, hey, you want to see something? And I'm like, yeah, I guess. And he'd do scotch and soda and he'd do it so bad. He'd get the coin and he's like, let me put this over and under, over and under. And then it'd fucking change and I, I'd jizz my pants. Uh, I remember my mom bought me a fucking birdcage. Is a fucking birdcage that disappears. I've never used it. I just have it. But, you know, motherfucker. Uh, I bought it from there. Overpriced that shit. But it was still classic magic store. Uh, but that's called the House of Costumes uh, in uh, Miami, I guess. 8th Street. Fucking right there. It's a landmark. Let me see what they... Uh, de los trucos. Casa de los trucos. Uh, yeah, there you go. Now it's called Crazy for Costumes. What a fucking shit show. Hold up. Did they fucking redecorate? I think they remodeled the, sh the store. Fuck, I haven't been there so long. No, it's the same shit. Okay, thank God. I thought they remodeled the fucking interior of the store. Uh, but yeah, it's called uh, Crazy for Costumes. That one on A Street in Miami, Florida. That one's fucking phenomenal. Uh, used to be, but now it's... Um, now it's just literally all costumes. It's overpriced costumes. Uh, but that's the one here. There's also in uh, Bayside and, and fucking... Uh, that one's a piece of shit. Um, Magic Hut. But there aren't a lot of stores. Even in Orlando. Orlando used to have a lot of uh, good ones. Um, Orlando has fucking... It used to have one. Uh, it used to have one in downtown Disney. But they fucking... They've taken that shit out. Motherfuckers. I guess it's, it's, it's harder to maintain. It's harder to, uh, to, you know, pay fucking, uh, pay rent on those motherfuckers. Uh, hold up. Somebody said something here that's interesting. Uh, fuck. Steve Bridges, Gabriel Badaro. Uh, thoughts on Steve Bridges? Uh, he's a great performer. He's a fucking an amazing performer. Um, but he doesn't do tutorials. He's one of the ones that are, um, He's one of the, yeah, there you go, Lindsay. Magic shops are ruining magic. Too much exposure. You know, fuck. Uh, again, that, that was a legitimate argument when magic shops, you know, became a thing. Fuck. People saying, oh, motherfuckers, you guys are ruining magic. You guys are selling magic to the public. So you're always going to have one generation that's going to complain about the fucking new innovations of the current generation. It's fucking a joke. Uh, but yeah, Steve Bridges is a great magician. Uh, I just don't... Um, I don't necessarily agree, I think, with his idea of tutorials on YouTube. I don't think there's an issue with tutorials done correctly on YouTube. So, But other than that, he's a fucking wonderful magician. He's a great performer. Uh, he has a great personality. So um, I don't have anything. I, I think he's a great fucking guy. I'd suck his dick if he was here. Uh, thank you so much for your interest and, and uh, nice video. Good humor. Amazing personality. I try. I try. Um, I try. It's a lot of self-loathing and hatred uh, that I'm pushing down in, in the inside of my body. But uh, apart from that, uh, I'm glad that you enjoy my countrific personality. Uh, motherfucker. Let's see. What's this? Hey, Jason Buffer. One hot dollar on Patreon. Thank you, dog. I hope you appreciate the content that's there. Um, Jason Buffer, if you're listening now, I'd suck your dick if you were here. Uh, but yeah, so hold up. Somebody said, uh, how much more durable was bicycle cards and plastic coated cards? Way more fucking durable. Definitely, uh, more durable. So, I mean, the, the air cushion finish, um, I used to buy a deck called Streamline or Steamline or whatever the fuck that were like really, really plastic. Uh, I don't like those, but, uh, yeah, air cushion finish definitely, uh, lasts way longer. 
you know, like the plastic ones just just fucking wear out uh, quick as shit. Uh, help you quit smoking. I mean, vaping helps, I guess, if you get the ones with nicotine and then you uh, diminish the levels of nicotine, I guess. I've never smoked, so I've never, I can't really tell you anything, Gabriel. Um, but fuck, man. Yeah, just, just stop. You, you don't want to fucking, uh, you don't want to have that on you. Uh, JS, J Jenser. Oh, uh, am I, am I correct in saying that your first name is, uh, oh, JS. Okay, so JS. Jansfer with the hot, apparently Nokia 50. <laughs> Thank you for that, dog. I appreciate that hot super chat. Uh, I would, again, suck your penis if you were here. You look kind of attractive from your profile picture. So I would suck your penis if you were um, in, in my presence. Uh, if it was clean, of course. And, you know, if it wasn't clean, then. Mm. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate that, dog. Uh, <laughs> he said, don't be a bitch. North Korea. Yeah, is that North Korean money? Did you donate North Korean currency on me? Uh, Maverick. Yeah, there you go. Mavericks. Uh, that's that's the one. That's the other ones. Uh, there was one good set, Lindsay, of, um, of plastic coated cards that were really good. Oh, Norwegian. You cannot say my name. Yeah, I can't say your fucking name. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. I'm a piece of shit. Norwegian. Okay. Well, thank you, dog. I, I'm, it, I, every time I see somebody from... Um, other places, you know, it's kind of nuts that I have people that watch my shit from literally everywhere. Australia, India, Russia, uh, fucking New Zealand, uh, Totor, watching my shit over there. Edward Totor. Uh, Africa, I have motherfuckers, you know, people from Egypt. Yeah, Brazil, there you go. Fucking Argentina. Uh, not Cuba. I have motherfuckers in Cuba watching my shit, so. But yeah, I find that kind of nuts. Uh, Sima, where you at in, in Florida? You're probably northern Florida, where all the hicks are. Uh, Canada, yeah, motherfuckers, man. I have people from everywhere. Sri Lanka, motherfuckers, yeah, everywhere. That's fucking nuts, man. I'm always surprised with where the fuck people are watching my shit. France, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you're in France. Oh, boy. I'm kidding. I, I, I enjoy French women. I like French women a lot. They're, they're very attractive. Philippines, motherfuckers. Watch out for the man boys. I hear they're a big issue over there. Uh, actually, funny enough, tomorrow's video, just to give you guys a little bit of a preview. Uh, um, tomorrow's video, not <laughs> Greece. Uh, tomorrow's video is on, uh, I wrote, I think I tweeted. Let me see, let me see if I, I get the spelling here. If you're not following me on Twitter, you're missing out on some dang hot memes. <laughs> also, it's you cunt. Uh, but I tweeted. Revited reaction video tomorrow. That's not a gross misspelling, man. That is not a gross misspelling. That is a uh, that is based on uh, the video that is coming out tomorrow, which is a reaction video uh, on I think one of the highest viewed videos on YouTube uh, in terms of magic. Cause motherfucker, I saw this video and I lost my shit in terms of how this video has. 21 million views holy motherfucker i mean yeah the guy that does it is not a, is not exactly uh he's pretty charming i guess you know he's not i i could see why you know but i can see why the video got would get you know a decent amount of views but 21 million holy shit uh but tomorrow's video or today's video actually uh because already it's already the second of November, uh, but today's video is gonna be on that, so you guys got a little bit of a hot, uh, hot preview on that. Um, but it's another reaction video. Uh, Harrison Zeller, hello, sexy. Hey, you're the you're the hot one, dog. With the the first name of the last name of one of the greatest actors of all time, dog. Actually, no, the the last you, you, Harrison Zeller. Yeah, there you go. Harrison Ford, there you go. The shares the first name. Of also one of the greatest actors of all time who hopefully <coughs> hasn't committed a sexual act. God damn it, everyone's fucking everyone's getting busted for doing for diddling Skittles. Everyone in fucking Hollywood. Uh, I mean all those motherfuckers had it coming, but I, I just hope that it's not like I just hope tomorrow we don't find out fucking Harrison Ford and you know all these Charlton Heston sucked my dick. 
You know, that's that's all I need. Fucking Christopher Walken, touch my cock. Like I, I, you don't want good people. Like fucking decent people. This guy, Kevin Spacey, is kind of fucked because you know I like Kevin Spacey. But uh, thoughts in North Korea about to blow the world up. Uh, I care less about that and more about the American citizen that got uh, arrested there, uh, who died. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That shit was fucking nuts. If you guys haven't seen that story, get on that shit. That motherfucker, it was an American citizen that went over there on some sort of trip. Uh, yeah, North Florida is pretty much Kentucky, dog. Uh, there's a, the moment you pass Fort Lauderdale, you are in a different country. Uh, but yeah, back to the North Korea shit, uh, Hulk. Fucking North Korea, dog. This guy uh, went on a trip to North Korea. Uh, he stole a poster. Apparently, stealing a poster over there is the same as uh, the same as bitch slapping a toddler. Apparently, because they arrested him and they were gonna put him in a, in one of those concentration camps uh, in North Korea. And then it turns out that uh, they had a whole back and forth, like uh, to expedite him or to, to extradite him or whatever the fuck. And then when they brought him back. To the United States, they said, oh, by the way, he got really sick over here. So you might want to check him out. Uh, then he promptly died here. And when the doctors did an autopsy, they found out that they had removed part of his brain. <laughs> they removed part of So the reason he was sick was because they fucking gave him a, a goddamn fucking... Uh, what's it called now? Son of a bitch. Five years of psych. Lobotomy. They fucking lobotomize this motherfucker. Um, there you go. Thank you, Lindsay. They lobotomize this guy. Yeah. And, you know, wh what can you do? You can't do fucking shit because there's no communication between the North Korean government and our government. So they just fucked this guy up. Uh, so, shit. They, they fucked that guy up. So I'm more interested in that story than uh, the actual potential of um, Kim Jong-un potentially uh, doing nuclear. Sorry, nuclear. To quote Homer Simpson, nuclear uh, warfare on the United States of America. So, yeah, it did get dark pretty quickly. It just sucks. The whole thing really sucked, uh, especially if you were following it. If you were following it, um, you know, following the story as it was happening. Because I remember they first broke the news story that he got arrested. And then he broke the news story that he, he was, you know, dealing with. They were trying to bring him back here. And then... You see the news story that's like, oh, yeah, they took his brain out. Uh, motherfucker. What a fucking shit show that place is. Uh, I don't know if it's real or not, but there's a picture of, like, uh, Xbox, the Xbox network, right? Where they, um, not sure if it was a lobotomy. Uh, I don't know if it was oxygen dep deprivation. I might be misremembering the story, but uh, I do remember that there was something on, uh, something on the, that they took a piece of his brain out. That's that's what I remember hearing in uh, multiple news stories that they just took pieces of his brain out, uh, which is the most fucking juvenile. Like how? Let's okay. So you you run North Korea like a, with an iron fist. Nothing happens in North Korea that you're not fucking that you're not like aware of. They hold the fucking street down uh, if you find graffiti, right? If they found an instance of graffiti, they shut the whole place down. So, what is their approach to try to get an American to not tell or not be able to tell other Americans the thing that he's fucking, the things that he's seen in North Korea? Oh, let's just take pieces of his brain out. That's like what a five-year-old would think of. That's something that a fucking, like a five-year-old would do. It's fucking stupid. Um, there's a great series by Vice. Uh, before they turned all political, uh, but there was a great series on Vice uh, on North Korea, which I remember showing to my students uh, years and years ago, just as um, you know, as a thing of like what's going on around the world. And uh, they sneak into North Korea, and then they sneak back into North Korea. It's a fucking amazing series by Vice uh, that uh, this guy did. You should, I mean, if you're remotely interested in North Korea, you should check that shit out because it's it's literally a place where time stops. It, time just stopped there. It's fucking phenomenal. Uh, Dan Pizza. Shouting you out because you just gave me a hot dollar on uh, Patreon. Thank you, dog, again. I appreciate uh, I appreciate that. And I hope you appreciate the, the stuff you get there. You got some good exclusive content on Patreon. Um, I know some people. Some people have 
pulled out of that. Um, but, you know, I try to put a lot of good stuff there. Uh, I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent with that. And I'm always trying to figure out Patreon because it's kind of, um, you know, it's kind of a unique thing. So I'm always wanting to add stuff to there that's, you know, things that I consider like my babies. So I put stuff there. Uh, I hope you enjoy the stuff there, Dan Pizza, if you're watching. Uh, rice gum or I-dubs? Uh, I-dubs. Uh, only because, and, you know, I've been watching that whole drama. Uh, I've been watching that whole drama with I-dubs and shit. I've always liked I-dubs, not only because this shit is funny, but because he's one of the people that, you know, he's a big proponent of free speech, number one. Uh, and also, he he just makes a lot of, like, he he's logical. When it comes to his content cops, he hits, he doesn't hit them personally. He hits what they do. Uh, you know, this guy, Dennis Roddy, um, who does How to Prank It Up, I fucking hate his videos. I detest his videos. Uh, he left a comment on one of iDub's videos, kind of, you know, uh, saying that he didn't have an issue with iDub making a content cup on him because iDub didn't attack him personally. He just attacked his content. And he was very gracious of that, um, you know, that he, he attacked uh, that. He was defending himself because it's unfortunate that his, uh, Dennis Roddy, his daughter, had, a, you know, she had a, a medical episode and he hasn't been able to upload. Um, but uh, the thing that I like about iDubs is that, you know, when it comes to his content cops, he attacks the characters and he does it in a way, sorry, he attacks the content and he does it in a way that's, that's very logical. So then you see someone like Rice Gum's response and his response is just, cancer he pretty much <laughs> it's like he watched idub's video and he's like let me do everything he said that i do but let me turn it up more and then you have people like keemstar defending uh rice gum obviously because idub's eviscerated keemstar um and then keemstar trying to pretend like he's not biased like come on dude <laughs> come on dude you know and again, yeah, it didn't really have an effect on anyone. It, it, I, Rice Gum is still making millions, uh, getting vil, uh, millions of views on his shit. Keemstar is still getting uh, millions of hits on his. Uh, but I, I think it's less of an attack on the actual channel itself and more of an attack on the concept, uh, more of an attack on you know the things that they're putting out. So it's not necessarily a content cop. I don't think it's designed to kill a channel. Leafy was just fucking... <laughs> Leafy was just a coincidence. He had shit content, so you know it was inevitable that his shit was gonna go down. Uh, but um, you know, I don't think Idubs his his kind of goal is to kill a channel. Is to kind of bring awareness to the fact that these guys are fucking doing shitty things. Like Keemstar is doing shitty things. Uh, Rice Gum is doing shitty things, and he should. They should be called out. They should be fucking. You know, these things should be fucking called out. Um, I can't see the face. That's funny. Uh, but yeah, so I, I definitely am iDubs all the way. Not out of like just fandom and just like, oh my God, oh, iDubs, because I'm five and I like the fact that he says cunt. I just think that his, his arguments are logical. They come from a sense of reason and people like, um, like Rice Gum, uh, they cater more towards the younger demographic that are like, you got owned, you got pwned, dude. You know, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's enough that I want to fucking talk about that stupid drama. Uh, the intensity of the last nuclear test, yeah. Um, but then apparently a bunch of them, Hulk, uh, fucking died, right? There, there was like 200 of them that died in a, nu a nuclear facility over there, which is fucking nuts in uh, North Korea. I, I dubs is YouTube's Batman. Yeah, we need that. Uh, do I watch Impact? No, unfortunately, I don't watch Impact, Lindsay. Uh, I'm, I'm not watching Impact. Uh, I am keeping up to date with uh raw and smackdown but not impact even though uh i'm a fan of lashley saw him live when he came down here <laughs> i'm a ginger i'm sorry meme hierarchy uh i saw the show when samoa joe was down here so elbow i'll give you some elbow that's some elbow there you go uh joshua pierce you saw it for free dog uh do i watch ufc yeah i watch ufc from time to time um you know mostly just the pay-per-views uh i went to a taping yeah they had a taping in a uh, um and I went to it. It was fucking phenomenal. Uh, the audience was so shitty that we pretty much got... Uh, they moved us to try to make the audience look bigger. And they moved us to like first row. It was fucking great. Uh, you know, George St. Pierre is kind of... He's kind of fucked. I don't know if you've ever heard him talk. He's an animal. He's a fucking animal. <laughs> Shane Diesel is my favorite MMA fighter. You fucking cunt. That's a good Shane Diesel meme. Uh, can you see me in the crowd? No, you can't. Uh, no, you can't, Lizzie. Um, but, um, uh, let me see. Somebody said, uh, but yeah, I, he's a beast. George Champagne is a fucking beast. 
So I, I, I don't know. He's getting older, though. He's getting more fucked up. If you hear his interviews, he's getting more and more uh, kind of... Um, what do you call this? Uh, he's getting more and more incoherent when it comes to his dialect. So it's, it's just a result of getting punched in the face way too much. Uh, but I don't know. I really don't know who to tell you. Uh, either him or George St. Pierre. Uh, where can we see the origin of the Five of Hearts meme? I think it's the fourth episode. It might be episode four. Uh, so the fourth episode that I made on uh, on the channel. If you look at episode four, that might be the origin of that. Uh, no, it's the fourth video. The third video is a piece of shit. Uh, it's a piece of shit, the third video. The first video I liked, I think the second video was my favorite one out of the whole that whole series. The third video was Cancer. And then the fourth video was all right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Shane Diesel, best babysitter in the world. Uh, yeah, yeah. He looks like a generally nice guy, too. He looks like a generally nice guy. Not to get fucked by, um, but <laughs> just a nice guy. He has a nice uh, face, like a nice, like a, like a friendly face when he's not dicking down a, a tiny bitch. Uh, peace out, dog. Peace out. You, you get your, you get your, uh, you get your sleeping. Uh, you get your sleeping, dog. Let's see. Uh, do you know how to do a lapel spread? I'm trying to do my asshole super clenched. Uh, you know, I've never... I can do one. <laughs> I can do a lapel spread, but I'm not going to do it on camera. Uh, because... <laughs> because it's not like... It's not good. It's not a good lapel spread. It's a, it's a lapel spread. I mean, the cards are springing and they're spreading. But it's not like one of these fucking amazing ones you see on Instagram where they fucking make like an S. Uh, it's not one of those shits, so I'm definitely not, not going to do that on camera. So I'm not going to teach you a slide that I do very shittily. Uh, Gabriel, fuck, yeah, man. Motherfucker. I mean, if you watch that Captain Disillusion video on it, um, Captain Disillusion, another fucking YouTube channel uh, that's phenomenal. Fucking phenomenal. Uh, but he uh, he made a really good video kind of showing on America's Got Talent that it's... Uh, it's what do you call this shit? Um, that it, yeah, it's definitely edited a little bit by the the producers um, just to make it look better on camera. And you could see kind of you could see that because the the shots where the the magic happens, the shots are really close and really pressed. Um, you know, they're they're stationary. It's just one shot, and you know it doesn't really make sense with the editing. So it's just fucking nuts. Uh, it really does seem like the evidence does seem to support that it's a it's a camera trick with the addition of gimmicks. Uh, where in Florida do you live if you're comfortable? A saying. Oh, yeah, I've said South Florida. I've said it. You know, I'm comfortable saying that. It's the Southern Florida under Orlando, it, that area, that whole area. I put I rub my dick all over that area. Um, let's see. Uh, I see some spam here. Hi, Daniel. Fucking cunt. Uh, what do you think about the Cardistry expansion? In my country, there's not a lot of Cardists. Do you think it will become a phenomenon? I think it's already becoming uh, as popular as it will be, and it's only going to get more popular. But um, right now, it's kind of at, like, the peak. I, I'm, I like to look at it. You know, don't get me wrong. I like to look at it. I don't necessarily like to practice it. Um, I think that is something that could be, should be separate uh, from magic. Uh, and should only be used in the right context. I've said this before. Um, but, you know, I, I like looking at it. To me, it's eye candy. Um, but I, I would consider it as something that's definitely separate from magic. And the only times that it should be used in the context of magic is uh, as a kind of, if in the right context. So, <clears throat> you know, if you're using it with the right context. Uh, somebody about Shane Diesel winning FISM. I don't think there's been 40 fisms. <laughs> you cunt. Uh, how to make our YouTube channel a lot of subscriber? Give me tips, bro. I've already said it before. Um, it's consistency, number one. It's, it's uh, you got to find something different. You got to just, you know, go against the grain. Everyone's doing the same shit. So you got to find a way to make that different uh, and be your own. I could say that, you know, people have copied me, which is, I think, the, the point of... Uh, 
you know you've you're kind of doing it well when people are copying you and you know i've seen people on youtube copy me copy my tricks copy my style and um uh you know i guess it's flattering but it's also kind of annoying because it's you know i try to find my own style when i made the channel i wasn't necessarily copying anyone i was trying to be myself trying to be a little bit unique in terms of the way i presented the tricks and you know somebody's copying that which is i guess flattering or other people are copying that which is you know i guess that but um you know you want to be your, you want to be unique you don't want to copy somebody else uh so aldo dallin uh it's to be consistent uh mind of quality you know even though a lot of people don't necessarily have access to you know good things to film uh most phones now could film at decent quality if you care about the lighting uh so fuck dude you, i mean this is a phone that i'm doing this with this is I, I said it before in the live stream. I used this to film the first, uh, a lot of the first videos where with this phone, uh, you can't really tell the difference when I stopped using it, apart from the fact that you could zoom in. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, oh, Piezo Mofo. I'm Dan Pizza. I'm so happy to support you. I wish I had more to give. Uh, yeah, I appreciate everything. I really, really do. Uh, I never thought that I would actually make even one dollar with fucking YouTube, but. You know, I'm happy that I've, I could say I've made a little bit more than that. Uh, but thank you, man. I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, P.S. Mofo, Dan Pizza. I really, really do appreciate that. Uh, let me see some other stuff. I'm Rick Harrison and this is my pawn shop. I remember seeing that place when I went to Vegas. I passed by it. Uh, I really wanted to go in, but I feel like they wouldn't be there. Uh, what f books are you reading at the moment? Magic or not? Uh, you know, I'm trying to get into different books that aren't necessarily magic related. I'm trying to, you know, expand that because I really only read magic books. Um, and I'm trying to find out books that are not necessarily magic related just to try to do this. There's an app called Blinkist, which is, uh, they, they summarize books. They get a bunch of nonfiction books and they summarize it. Um, you know, uh, to kind of, you could pretty much get the best information of a book in little snippets I, I really like that service uh it does get a little bit expensive but they do have a free option uh, i just i did the free trial it was fucking dope as shit um so just you know general nonfiction books just to try to expand uh expand my knowledge per se but you know i like i like looking back at uh the books that i have and kind of just going through them seeing if i find new stuff so for example um art of astonishment i'm going through that again to see if i find anything that you know I might have skipped and glossed over, and you always find something. So, I, I'll, Art of Astonishment, to answer your question, uh, J.D. Payton. Uh, let's see. Hold up, son of a bitch. Somebody said, somebody said here. One more. Are there any tips for people who have small hands to be good at playing cards like me? Uh, I have really small hands, so you have no excuse. I have as small of hands as you could possibly imagine. I'm a short motherfucker. As you can see by the uh, videos I recently put up, um, I'm a pretty short motherfucker. I have short ass fucking hands. Uh, so, you know, some uh, Pontus is saying Br bridge cards. I used to use bridge cards uh, and then I realized this is fucking retarded. Just get a get regular size cards and learn whatever you can with those cards uh, because your hands will accommodate to the cards. You know, I, I didn't think that I would be able to do passes and slides and double lifts and breaks with bicycle or regulation size cards, it just took a lot of practice and I did. So it's just commitment and consistency. Uh, so definitely uh, just to keep practicing, motherfucker. Like it's not, there's no shortcut. Am I a robot? No. Uh, I might be a vegetable or acoustic, as iDubbbz likes, uh, likes to say it. Uh, go to card trick. I've already said it back in time by Jay Sankey. I could do that trick pretty much dead. Uh, the two tricks I could pretty much do dead, like dead. If you just give me a deck and I'm dead and I could do it, uh, I don't have to have like blood in my system. Uh, back in time by Jay Sankey and man on the ninth floor. I could do both of those tricks dead. Like I, I don't even have to think anymore to do those tricks. Uh, wish you the best. Yeah. Thank you. New diversion. You enjoy your night. Uh, fun gimmick. Put normal key on top, do a double lift, <laughs> get pussy. Thank you, Baron Boots, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Here, I thought I was going to get, like, something interesting. Um, do I have any tattoos? No, no, I'm, I'm a fan of the uh, the Sebastian Manis Calco uh, line, which is why put 
a uh, bumper sticker on a Ferrari, right? Why put a bumper sticker on a motherfucking Ferrari? So I think uh, that's what I got to say about tattoos. I'm not a fan of tattoos. Uh, I mean, I don't care if you have them, but I'm not a fan of getting tattoos or actual females with tattoos. I'm not a fan of that. So Trevor, I'm sorry. Uh, what kind of nonfiction? I'll tell you right now, as a matter of fact, uh, just general nonfiction, John. Um, like, uh, I'll tell you right now. Oh, I actually deleted the app. That's funny. Uh, you know, whatever I can read, that's nonfiction. Usually the books about like productivity and shit. Uh, I'm really kind of, I, I enjoy those. There's something known as productivity porn, which is that you read more about productivity than actually be productive. I'm kind of falling into that trap, uh, you know, so I'll fall into like reading blogs and shit. Um, another great app is Pocket. Uh, Pocket, you know, you could, it just recommends articles based on um, your, based on whatever search you have. But yeah, just any, I'm, I'm just trying to expand, you know, as much as I possibly can, uh, my already countryific knowledge. So pretty much anything, Johnji. Uh, let me see. Oh, shit. Getting hot notifications. Hey, damn. Uh, Jace, <laughs> you motherfucker. You motherfucker trying to get me here to pronounce your name. Uh, Jan, Jan Bosch with a hot $5 on Patreon. Thank you, dog. I appreciate it again. Uh, I, I'm trying to, I'm, there's a lot of stuff there. There's really a lot of stuff there that I, I consider my bread and butter. There's one idea there um, that is probably my favorite idea on Patreon. If you guys haven't checked it out, uh, it's called the Spread Peak. It's nothing new. Uh, it's just the it's it's my take on old ideas. Uh, it's my way of doing the peak. I've already spoken at you on YouTube of doing the peak instead of like this, like this, spreading the cards towards the spectator and having them call stop. Uh, there's something, and I give a lot of tips on uh, an idea with spread with the spread peak concept uh on that uh some ways to do that that are pretty much one of my favorite motherfuckers so you know just uh it's just to give you kind of a stupid idea um having somebody think of a card right they think of the card uh and then that card ends up at a number you know determined by spectators so ideas like that pretty much uh, but using that concept of the spread peak. Uh, so there's a lot that could be done with that. And that I drop on Patreon. So Jen, uh, one more time, just to make sure that I'm not fucking your name up. Jen Bodge. Thank you, dog. Uh, let me see some other shit. Uh, you don't have either, so I don't need an apology. I wasn't apologizing in case you have tats. I don't give a fuck if you have tats. <laughs> but, okay, JS. There you go. JS. Uh, yeah, I can't speak Norwegian, man. <laughs> I only, I have English and Spanish and my Spanish is also fucking horrendous. Um, but yeah, hold up. I was saying on Trevor. Yeah, I wasn't apologizing. I was just saying uh, that I'm sorry in general. I don't know why I said it. F fuck me. Uh, Daniel calling me a cunt. Let's see. Do I have a pet? No, I have a pet. Oh, unfortunately, yeah. Unless my dick is a pet. These nuts. Sorry, too much. Uh, no, I don't have pets. Uh, the reason for that is I, man, I love puppies. Don't get me wrong. I love a fucking good puppy. Uh, but just the, the sadness of leaving the, of the puppy, you know, dying eventually <laughs> much sooner than you will is enough for me not to, um, not to, uh, not to get a puppy. You do need that, uh, Joshua Pierce. You need a, a way bigger, way bigger penis in your mouth, dog. I like, I, see, I'm a, I'm a fan of the pinga word, and that's not a very common word, uh, northern, uh, north of Florida. That word is not that common, uh, north of Florida. Down here, it's very common. It's very common. It's, it's my favorite way of saying dick. Uh, let's see, favorite alcoholic beverage. Uh, I wouldn't have one, dog. I don't have a favorite alcoholic. Uh, let's see. Ice bank mice. All right. That's fucking weird. I made your nipples hard. Uh, Lindsay Harvey with the CM Punk. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of CM Punk. I've mentioned that before. You've mentioned that before, Lindsay, in previous live streams. Uh, because I do recall the country of the cunts. 
that attend these live streams. Um, but yeah, but uh, you know, Sam Funk. I I always really like Sam Funk. I I know that you always read those stories about him being an uh, ass, you know, him being an asshole. But the guy's a fucking genius. His IQ is fucking nasty big. Uh, you know, I think that he was definitely, definitely someone that they misused uh, tremendously. Uh, pinga means an alcoholic beverage in Portuguese. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that happens a lot. Typically, curse words in one country mean like mother in another country. It's fucking hysterical. Uh, no, no, I believe you, Gabriel. I fucking believe you. That's probably that's probably the case. There's a lot of fucking words. Um, what's your opinion on David Blaine accusation? Uh, I mean, I don't have one. I'm a huge fan of David Blaine, so I'm biased already. You know, without even doing much, I'm already biased as fuck um, when it comes to that. Um, but again, you have to be... You have to really take it with evidence. There, I'm not going to make an accusation unless there's evidence, unless there's like a consistency in that. And, you know, he's denying it. I don't think there's any reason uh, that he... He doesn't seem like he's a person that he's... Uh, to lie, like, I don't know, he doesn't seem like a, that type of person, you know, from what I've heard about him around in the magic community, I don't think that he's, uh, that maybe something happened, maybe something didn't, but, you know, until the truth comes out, like, the evidence comes out, I, I really don't have much of an opinion on that, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all coming out around this time, so now anybody could say stuff, and then it's, it's going to get lost in the wind. So this whole situation is just fucking crazy. What's happening with like Hollywood and all that. But, you know, it's something that people have known about for fucking years. Everyone has fucking known about that shit for fucking years. About all the things going on in Hollywood. Um, I think Blaine's a part of Hollywood. Uh, but again, I, I don't know enough about the situation to have an opinion on it. I hope David Blaine doesn't Chris Benoit himself. I remember hearing about that, uh, the Chris Benoit situation. Uh, I think I came home from school. I forgot what grade I was in, but uh, I remember seeing that tribute show, and I'm like, damn, this fucking guy's dead, what the fuck, then the next day on SmackDown, they had a tribute show, and then Wednesday, they're like, yeah, we're never gonna mention him again, because he kinda killed his family, it was like the biggest fucking peak, uh, eight, uh, Tony 8040, or Tony 840, I don't know if that's a, a take on Jarek 120, uh, but two double lifts. Uh, I like two double lifts. I like this one. I like that one. Gordon Bruce. I like that one. Uh, I like this one with the Altman trap. I really like that, that double lift. Um, another one that I'd found myself to do recently is this one. Five, by the way, five of hearts mean. That's funny. Uh, I like this one. I like that one. I really like the double lift from my dribble. I, li I really, really enjoy that one. Um, you know, as long as it gets the job done. Uh, you know, this one gets a bad rap, just showing the cards like this. But I think that if you, uh, if you have the right scenario and the right context, this is a fucking great double lift. Hey, okay, Queen of Spades, do me a favor, hold your hand out just like that. Okay, perfect. That, you putting the card back on the fucking deck becomes invisible because it's a transitive move. So even this double lift can be one that's fucking great. Uh, how do you grip a double turnover? I mean, this one I'm gripping in between the upper corner here. So I'm gripping it here and here uh, on the opposite sides of the pips, I guess. That's that's a grip, right? Uh, but yeah, those are, those are the double lifts. Hey, you always miss call Stuart Gordon as Gordon Bruce. Yeah? Is this stuff, oh, man? You know, I've done that consistently every time somebody's asking about a fucking double lift. And then that, I've gotten mixed up with Stuart Judah. I've gotten mixed up with Stuart James. I've gotten mixed up with Gordon Stewart. Uh, Gordon Bruce. I'll tell you right now who Gordon Bruce is. Gordon Bruce. Uh, double lifts. I'll tell you right now who it is. Gordon Bruce. Yeah, Gordon Bruce is the one that made that double lift. It is Gordon Bruce. I'm looking at it now on this uh, thing, and they're, they're crediting him, Gordon Bruce, for that double lift. From 1971. Uh, so it is Gordon Bruce. Um, let's see. So I miss... Yeah, so I say Stuart Gordon like an idiot. Uh, but it is... It's Gordon Bruce. That's the one I made that, that double lift. Uh, 
Oh, how do you grip it when you turn it over? Well, there's no grip. There's no grip. Uh, you know, you're just holding the cards like this, right? There's no grip on it in particular. I'm just, there's a double lift. Uh, there's a pinky break there. Reach in, right? I don't, I don't understand the question there, but there's, there's no grip there. Or no, <laughs> motherfucker. There's no um, differentiating in that. No, man, people say Stuart Gordon double. You say Gordon Bruce, so you're correct. Yeah, I think I'm correct. Uh, I think it's Gordon Bruce. When I first learned it, it was I, I remember seeing uh, in one of old, one of Greg Wilson's old tapes, uh, Pyrotechnic Paceports. Uh, he referred to it as the Gordon Bruce double lift, and from then on, I've most of the time referred to it as the Gordon Bruce double lift. Sometimes I, I've added the Stewart, you know, I've added Stewart in there. I, I've mixed it up a little bit, but uh, Gordon Bruce is definitely Gordon Bruce. Uh, is it gay to suck your own dick? I don't know. That's a fucking weird one. Because uh, it's your own dick, dude. But you're sucking a dick. So it's like a, par a paradox. If you go back in time and kill your grandfather, can you do that? But you wouldn't because you would never be alive because you would have gone back and killed your grandfather. See, it's a paradox. You suck your own dick, you're gay. Uh, what's your opinion on Daniel Madison? I think that he's very creative. I think that he's very skillful. Uh, but apart from that, I, I don't watch enough of his content to, uh, like, I, I know I, I poke fun of him for the whole black and white shit um, and the illusionist demo videos, but that's really all my experience with him. I don't really, like, I'm not, I haven't gotten his downloads, I haven't gotten his uh, books and shit, I haven't gotten that, so I don't really have enough of a knowledge base on Daniel Madison to make fun of him, apart from the, I am Daniel Madison, apart from that part. I mean, that's pretty much it. Uh, let me see some other shit. Uh, okay, that's kind of weird. Hockey? I was a fan of hockey. I liked hockey. I used to actually watch a lot more hockey than I do now. I don't watch any hockey at all. But I used to watch a lot of hockey back in the day. Um, only because uh, of Pan the Panthers had this guy, this uh, player named Peter Worrell, right? Uh, who was probably the only black fucking hockey player in the entire league, Peter Worrell. Uh, and it was funny because he was the one that fought the most. He got ejected for for fucking a lot. Uh, and I used to like watching uh, Florida Panther games just because he would fucking, just to watch him pick fights with motherfuckers. It was like watching Dennis Rodman play. You know that he's going to clothesline a motherfucker. Uh, would I watch soccer? No. No, I don't watch soccer, unfortunately. Not a fan of soccer. I like playing soccer, but I'm not a fan of... Uh, I like a fan. <laughs> FB trash. That's funny. Um, I like playing soccer. I don't like watching soccer. I find it boring. Uh, it's like NASCAR. NASCAR, to watch it, is the most boring motherfucker to watch it on TV. But to go there? Fuck. To go to a NASCAR thing is probably the most fun motherfucking thing you can do because it's just a bunch of cars driving fast. Uh, do I have a day job? Uh, YouTube. I'm trying to make YouTube and um, magic my day job. Uh, Tony 840, or shall I say, uh, Jarek 120 imitation. Uh, but yes, uh, Sim, uh, Sim, I watch, um, I like UFC, believe it or not, I like wrestling, uh, I like uh, football, you know, I watch football from time to time, I watch basketball from time to time, uh, soccer I don't watch at all, because uh, I already said it's, it's, not, it's not a fun sport for me to watch, it's a fun sport for me to play, so. Uh, how much work or how much longer will you be on? Uh, well, I mean, it's already been an hour and 48 minutes. So I can't imagine much longer. I'm kind of hungry and I am also kind of tired. I don't know how Xavier Spades uh, does these. I just call him Xavier Spades. I'm a fucking retard. Uh, I don't know how Xavier Spade does these streams where he is like streaming. Like now he's streaming from like one to like five. That's fucking nuts. I'm looking up the double lift and it's Stuart Gordon. Uh, here, let me see. Unless Gor uh, Gordon Bruce came up with another different double lift. But uh, if you look up Gordon Bruce double lift, look it up. Uh, it's on Mag Magipedia. Oh, that's funny. The, the fifth video is my video. Hey, motherfucker. Look at that. How fucking hot is that? The fifth video on YouTube is uh, 
is uh is fucking my video. I'm sorry, on Google, when you look up Gordon Bruce double lift, that's kind of dope. Um, but yeah, but um, if you look that up, you'll see it. You'll see this is Gordon Bruce. Unless I'm wrong, I and mean, it's very possible that I'm wrong, but that's just how I learned it when I was younger. So I might be way fucking wrong. Uh, but I mean, that's how I learned it when I was younger. Let's see. Uh, Nibba, I'm holding the Ace of Diamonds. Am I holding the Ace of Diamonds? Oh, me too. There you go. That's funny. Uh, Joe Rogan had a podcast uh, two and a half years ago of Michael Stevens. I haven't seen that one. Uh, the one that I saw recently was with this ex-feminist guy, Michael Kilstein, I think if that's his name, uh, who now is now no longer a feminist. He used to be a male feminist, and now that they fucking called him out on his shit, <laughs> he's like, oh, okay, this is fucking retarded. Uh, I watched that one. The Louis Thoreau one is phenomenal. Um, anyone with Joey Diaz, any Joe Rogan podcast with Joey Diaz, fucking Coco is fucking great. Uh, shit. So yeah, any of those, uh, he admits that he is addicted to Taco Bell. Actually, no, funny enough. I just recently, uh, I bought that. There's a, uh, it's a shame to say this, but forever 21 had a Taco Bell collection where they sold Taco Bell brand clothes. Uh, I bought one, I bought uh, the jacket, the Taco Bell branded jacket, and I do not regret it. I love Taco Bell. Uh, Vsauce admits that he's addicted to Taco Bell. What sauce does Vsauce get, uh, do you think? He probably doesn't get any sauce. I don't think Vsauce gets any sauce. Um, he doesn't get any sauce whatsoever. He, he doesn't seem, uh, Vsauce Michael doesn't seem like a, uh, like a sauce person. I'm not a sauce guy either. Every time I go to uh, Jared Goldman, hello, sir, uh, you cunt. Uh, every time uh, I go to talk about, I don't get any sauce in that. They're like, do you want sauce? Get the fuck sauce away from me, dog. Uh, no, I did not dress up for Halloween, um, unfortunately. He's his own sauce. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he is his own sauce. He's Vsauce. If you haven't seen that Vsauce card trick, you check it out on my channel. Uh, not to show my own shit, but uh, Vsauce card trick, where I do a whole trick as Vsauce Michael. Hey, guys. Pig here. Uh, I don't know if you saw earlier, but I performed your dream card trick and it went well. Who's the credit for that? Uh, the dream card trick. Let me see. I know that, uh, it's probably inspired by, I think, believe it or not, a Jay Sankey trick. Dream card trick. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, okay. I didn't put anything on. Let me, let me rewatch it here and see. Uh, let me see. Hold up. Give me one hot second. So I can see. Wow. That's funny. So when you watch, when, when you laugh at your own uh, fucking memes, holy shit. Uh, for this trick, Uh, actually, you know what? The inspiration, I think, is uh, Red Hot Mama, believe it or not. Red Hot Mama, I think, is the inspiration. Uh, because I, I was kind of playing around with the idea of the, um, you know, Chicago opener, Red Hot Mama. I was playing around with that idea. And then uh, what happened was that I, I was also... Okay, hold up. So I was playing around with the idea of the, this card being a different color card, right, in the bottom of the deck. And then I had this situation happen, uh, where the face of card was here and I cut the deck. So then that kind of gave me the idea that I could s potentially switch this card if I had a cover card here, right? So if this card was a different colored card, um, I could switch the cards in that sort of way and do sort of a, you know, it just came in pieces. I remember the idea came in pieces, but it's definitely inspired by the Red Hot Mama. Um, it's definitely inspired by the idea of, uh, there was a behind the back switch years ago where you do a double lift. I remember Jay Sankey had something very similar too, where you do a double lift and you hand a spectator the cards behind her back and they put it the wrong way, right? Uh, and then they cut the cards, that whole shit. But, um, you know, the, it, it was just a bunch of things that I, I put together, but I don't remember there being one specific particular person that inspired that trick. Um, are you saying that because you, it's something similar that you've seen before, uh, Lindsay, or I don't know why you're asking that. 
uh, the trick preset on whatever project it is, five minus two, yeah, it's fucking lit. The eight card packet thing. Uh, yeah, I really hope you like, or people like that. Um, I really hope uh, people like that in the five minus two project. Uh, the sequence is John Guccifero, and I mentioned that uh, very, very much. Uh, you know, I mentioned it in the thing, um, but it's it's a John Guccifero sequence that's very fucking pretty. Um, he uses it in a bunch of tricks, but it's it's pretty much the the concept of being able to get um, being able to get a, a consistent breaks uh, with the packets. But I really enjoyed that version of reset, um, so I'm glad you liked it. Do you ever like Paul Harris? Fuck yeah, J.R. Goldman. Uh, Goldman. I'm going to call you Goldman. Uh, fuck yeah, I love Paul Harris. Uh, Art of Astonishment is phenomenal. Um, I love pretty much his, even his old shit is fucking nuts. Uh, the variation where I do a pass at one point before the final switch. Hard to explain without David Blaine exposing. I think I get you. I get what you mean. Uh, believe it or not, uh, top notch. Uh, Crow Guy, 13-2, 132. Hey, Pig, can I get a trick or special message or something? I just graduated into year 12 and spent 11 years fucking with magic. Ah, gotta say, man, congrats, and I'm sorry. Um, you know, uh, being a um, being a little bit of a, what do you call this shit? Being a little bit of a, obsessed with magic myself, I would say that you pretty much wasted the time that you didn't spend learning magic. So I gotta say congrats to you, Crow Guy 132 Hope you take that to the grave, dog. Uh, let me see. Hold up. I got a couple things that I want to address here. Have you ever heard of Ray Grismer? I have heard of him, but not in a long, long time. Uh, so I haven't heard from him in a long, long time. So unfortunately not. Uh, all right. You have a good night, you cunt. And uh, JS, do I look like a stalker freak if I buy five minus two? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, you might seem like a stalker freak. I mean, while I do appreciate the fact that you're a patron and you would, you know, get the Five Minus Two project, um, you'd be getting good value. Right? I mean, I'm a little bit biased, but I think the stuff I put out there is really good. Uh, the, the fuck, not to suck my own dick, but I'm gonna suck my own dick hard. The um, Overkill Nine Thousand, the switch. I think there's a switch and trick that accomplishes, I think, three things at the same time uh in that trick and that's that's an idea that i thought of you know years and years ago but that i think that little thing to me is it was fucking nuts that's enough of dick sucking uh that's your that's your uncle shit ray grismer was your uncle he's the one that made the um the branching anagrams right i think uh he was the one that did the uh, branching anagrams uh was it if, if I'm not, if my fucking magic uh, lore just passed, that sucks, man. That really does suck. Uh, you know, I just saw Fantasio passed away. I saw Fantasio passed away today. Fuck, man. He was the one, uh, I remember buying the fuck. I he vanished the fucking uh, thing. Uh, so if Ray Grismer, let me see, Ray Grismer. When he specifically passed away. Uh... Well, he died in 2010, right? So yeah, that's uh, Ray, Ray Grismer. Yeah, I mean, to me, 2010 was literally like a day ago, but it's seven fucking years ago. Uh, but Fantasia literally died today, which kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, <laughs> promo code Kevin Spacey Fetish for 100% off 5 minus 2. That's not true. I still uh, code Keem for 20% off the other two, though. It's uh, Keem. Uh, like a piece of shit. I don't know why I used that, but I thought it was funny. Yeah, you know what? I do remember that for the uh, the rope. Now that you reminded me of that, um, I do remember a couple uh, rope tricks with the credits uh, to Rick Rizmer. Uh Yeah, that sucks, man. We're losing a lot of the good ones, um, and it's you know it's just a shame. Uh, one of my uh, um, Rene Levant was one of my favorite fucking magicians, and when he passed away, you know, I'm like fuck, because hearing his poetry with the fucking tricks is like fuck, man. It's fucking, you know, it's a shame that you're not going to see that live uh, in person. But, you know, <laughs> that's life, I guess, right, motherfuckers? Uh, what's the weirdest thing that I've ever done with the raccoon? Uh, I don't know. I've done a lot of weird shit with that raccoon. Uh, I could have just copped out and done, like, an easy sex joke, right? But 
I remember taking that shit to school. I remember taking that shit to places. So that raccoon's been around. Um, pick up Jay Sankey's Devil's Tale. It's actually legit. I'm not enough of a virgin to uh, perfect the moves. Uh, I haven't seen that. I actually have not seen that. Um, I'm all, I've only been keeping track of Jay based on his YouTube videos. Um, apart from that, I really haven't seen his products. I've only seen more of his uh, YouTube videos. Uh, again, Airtight was, I think, the first trick I ever bought, and that was by Jay Sankey. Uh, I, his Greatest Hits, I bought that. That's fucking phenomenal. Um, I bought a couple of things from Jay, but they're fucking great. Uh, Greg Wilson and Paul Harris were the guys I was inspired by. Daryl, yeah, Daryl, another one. Uh, I think I mentioned it before in the live stream that he fucking, you know, he he went out on his own way. But you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's that was a good thing. Uh, and it kind of sucks because you know he's one of these people that outwardly, from everything you see, he has this very jolly, cheery personality. And then uh, when it comes to, you know, what he's feeling in the inside, it's really really wasn't matching. The outside and it's a fucking shame it really is a fucking shame but you know he left us with a fucking legacy and he left us with you know uh, fucking videos and he left us with memories and shit i guess of fucking learning the shit when you're fucking younger and so i guess you know he left a legacy which is always great but it's, it's unfortunate uh it's unfortunate the whole scenario with him <laughs> top notch when jay sangy dies i'll literally have to take off work to mourn him yeah yeah, when Jay Sangy dies, um, him and his Mister Clean like appearance. So I'm 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 gonna call this off right now, guys. Uh, I think at two two hours is a hot time. Uh, that's that's hotness. Uh, because I'm fucking tired, man. It's fucking one over here. I'm hungry and tired. Uh, yeah, James Randy. When James Randy dies, I will fucking... He doesn't live that far away from me either. So that's... I need to go over there. Visit him in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, top notch. Yeah, I'll use him in videos and I'll make fun of him. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, you guys do all the stupid shit that people do. Uh, people do with... Um, what do you call this? Uh, shit. Pickhig.me, right? Uh, what else? Uh, Patreon. You want to check that out? That's some hot shit. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, yeah, just the videos, man. Just watch the videos, share them. I want to grow this channel as much as possible. And I feel like a lot of people, uh, it, it needs to reach that audience. And that, that could be done by sharing the shit on Twitter, on Instagram, on Reddit. Uh, you know, so make sure to share these videos. I think that helps out tremendously to, to see if I can get that hot exposure. Uh, what else? Hmm. What else? What else? Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's, that's all I need to plug. Uh, I'm going to go figure out different ways to suck a dick and not be gay. Yeah. <laughs>